As we're getting ready for our first press conference today, we'd like to ask that everybody put their cell phone on silent. Also, uh, for questions, student athletes and, and coaches, we ask that you please provi provide your name and media affiliation uh, for each question that you have for student athletes or coaches. And then finally, for those individuals using Zoom, we ask that you use the hand feature. Uh, we'll see it and uh, we'll get to you so you can ask your question. Also, recording of the press conference uh, on cell phones or cameras is prohibited. Uh, we appreciate your cooperation. At this time, we'd like to welcome the Grambling State Tigers, uh, regular season and tournament champions of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. It is the second straight year they've won the regular season in the SWAC. This year, they were able to uh, win the automatic bid. It is the first appearance in the NCAA tournament for Grambling State, and we are really excited to have uh, Jordan Smith and Jermichael Moten uh, gentlemen, congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, before we open up uh, questions, uh, Jordan, we'll start with you. Just the excitement that has been uh, the week and in, in, in being here uh, in a historic moment for Grambling State. Um, it's a really exciting moment, you know. We like, we already been on the road for two weeks before this. So it's, it's, we're kind of getting used to it. But, you know, at the same time, it's still first time in program history. So it's been a lot of... There's been a lot of emotions going on this road trip lately. And uh, Jermichael, your, your excitement? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be a great experience for us. Uh, we're look, uh, looking forward to uh, everything, and we're going to be in the moment. Questions for student athletes. Let's go to the first row, or excuse me, the second row on the end. Chronicle. Sorry about that. Parker Cotton from the Bozeman Daily Chronicle. Uh, just curious about um, what kind of emotions, you know, your team has had in the last couple of days, you know, making it to the NCAA tournament for the first time and uh, how you've processed all of those uh, coming into this week. Jermichael? Uh, it's been uh, very exciting. Uh, we are very happy to uh, get a chance to come out and show our talents on March Madness. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, wonderful. Jordan? Um, it's been really exciting, you know, with, uh, with the championship uh, being a couple of days ago. But at the same time, we know we still have business to do. So it was a lot of happiness, but it's still more work to do. Follow-up question? Uh, also curious about what the preparation for Montana State has looked like since Sunday. You know, what has stuck out about them on film that you guys know that your team is going to have to be mindful of? Jordan? Um, they have, uh, they're, they're real, they, they score the ball a whole lot, so, you know, they have a whole lot of shooters, so we've been focusing on, um, closing out, closing out more, more farther than normal, you know, stun, stun to the guy, if that's not your man, stun to the guy, you might have to just take him instead of just stun, so, it's just, they have shooters, so we have to get out of there quicker, quicker than normal. Second row on the end. Uh, Austin Parr with SWX Montana. Um, just curious, you guys played a handful of teams that are already in the tournament. How do you think that experience will help you, you know, as you guys experience your first uh, ever tournament experience? Jordan? Um, I feel like it helped a whole lot. You know, Coach, Coach said that coming into it, like he, he made our schedule specifically for us to come into this tournament. You know, he also said he, he put Dayton on our schedule ahead of the season because he knew once we get to the tournament, we'll be here. So he, it was just setting everything up so we can get used to it before it happens. Jermichael? Oh, yeah, just like you said, uh, you know, he prepared us for uh, moments just like this. So, you know, we got to come in and be um, very prepared. Yeah, second row again. For those of us who are unfamiliar, are you able to take us through uh, what kind of team identity you guys like to have or, or believe that you have? and? Um, maybe as a second part to that, what kind of identity does you know Coach Jackson have? What does he what does he like to play for? Jermichael? Uh defense really. Uh come out 
be aggressive, play defense. Um, the defense gonna always always be with us. The offense not not gonna always be with us, but defense gonna turn into offense. Jordan, just like you said, uh, just a whole lot of defense, a whole lot of energy. You know, coach always says uh, the basketball starts on defense. You know, if you can get turnovers, get stops, that creates your offense. So, like you said, basketball wins games. I mean, defense wins games. Jordan, you you mentioned the experience in, in, in playing against Dayton. I know you you were out from that game, but it just the 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 atmosphere and you feel like that will be an advantage looking ahead towards tomorrow night. Yes, sir, definitely. Because you know, coming into games like that, you already know what to expect. You know, I, I didn't play, but at the same time, I, I understood how it felt, and it was it looked like almost a sold out crowd, and we had a couple games like that. So you know, if once. Once you play in some, once you play in some games like that, fourth fifth game, you're already used to it. Jermichael, you you did get to play in that game. Uh, talk about that experience and then how you feel you might be able to benefit from it and looking ahead towards the first four. Uh, it was a great experience. It, it prepared us for uh, we come out. We won't we won't be so rowdy and we just, we can be calm and just play basketball. Let's jump on Zoom. Uh, Coulter, your, your question for our student athletes. Hi, guys. Hey, Coulter Duanas from ESPN Montana as well as Skyline Sports. Thanks for doing this. Um, just the fact that you guys get to play on national TV, everybody in this tournament gets to play on national TV, but you guys get to play this singular game where everybody's going to be watching. What do you think of that opportunity, both for yourselves, your team, but also for your university as well? Jermichael? Um, it's going to be great. You know. Uh, this is something we've been looking forward to, and it's uh, exciting to uh, be in, so I know it's going to be a great experience. Jordan? Um, I think it's a great experience, you know, but at the same time, Coach has been, Coach has been preaching to us the whole season that we were going to get here, so it's just, it was just preparation, and now we're here, so we just have to take, take advantage of the situation. Second row. If I remember correctly, looking at your guys' schedule, it looks like you've won nine of your last 10 games coming into this week. Uh, I imagine that speaks to some amount of confidence or, or things going really well. What do you think has gone you know, to plan over this, this last stretch that maybe brings you guys a little bit, bit of momentum coming in? Jordan? Um, I think, honestly, I think it's just everybody started to click at, at the right time. You know, I think everybody bought in at one time. And like, you, you could sort of feel the difference you know, on defense. Like everybody, everybody, it wasn't as many missed assignments or like missed plays, that accidental plays and things like that, you know, and the, and the energy just picked up on defense. So when, once, once we had those situations, we started making more shots and we started playing with even more energy. Jermichael? Uh, yeah, everybody's on one accord. Uh, and um, I think everybody just really want to want win. And we, we gelled together real good. Uh, for those that are asking questions, we we just ask that you please state your name and your media affiliation before every question um, in regards to us uh, typing things up and um, having that information up at the press area and also online. Uh, we'll jump back out online. Uh, Coulter, another question for our student-athletes. Yeah, hey, guys. Coulter Nuanas, ESPN MT and Skyline Sports. Um, you played such a tough non-conference schedule. I mean, I think look at the bracket. You played like four or five teams that are in this tournament. So how much do you think that prepared you uh, for both your conference run and now coming into this NCAA tournament? Jermichael? Uh, it prepared us uh, very well. I know, uh, know they're going to be tough teams out there to play, but we ready for them. Jordan, the toughness of your non-conference schedule. Uh, I think it helped a lot, you know, coming into the tournament, coming into our, our conference tournament. It wasn't anybody that we were really, really shaken by. We we felt confident against everybody. And it wasn't really who we were playing. It was just the confidence that we had in ourselves based off of, based off of who we played and the, and the progress we made. So I feel real confident coming in. Jordan, obviously uh, it's exciting to, to, to be here, but you look at last year's team and, and winning the regular season in the SWAC and then not being able to sort of – Take advantage, have the full squad there for for the SWAC tournament. How 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 good does it feel this year of being able to to win both the regular season and the tournament? Uh, it, it feels real good, you know, because 
Last year we got the championship and we lost by three, but at the same time it was we had guys banged up on the court. We had guys that didn't play. So winning this year it was it was it was really for those guys. So last year, you know, after after we won, I called a lot of those guys. They called me on the phone just saying how proud they were of me. So really it's more than just the team that we playing for, it's just the teams last year as well. And then Sir Michael, just to add to that, sort of the the sort of the target on your back coming into the season with the expectations and then being able to come through? Uh, yeah, we know we had a target on our back from the beginning of the season, or well, since last year, you know. And we just know we had to come out of every game and knowing we had a target on our back and don't take nobody for granted. Uh, Chris, you question for our student athletes on Zoom. Yes, uh, it's kind of two questions. Uh, one for Tremichael. Um, Tremichael, being from Shreveport, uh, being from North Louisiana, being able to re represent Grambling in the NCAA tournament, what does this week and what does this game mean to you? Uh, it means a lot, but I, I know uh, the city, they behind us no matter what we do. So it's, uh, it's going to be a great feeling. Chris, your other question? Yeah, uh, Dante, you know, you worked so hard for so many years um, to get to this point. Um, how emotional was it after winning the SWAC championship? Jordan, you mean? Uh, Dante Jackson, Coach Jackson. He's not up here yet. Oh, okay. Oh, well, oh I think that's for anyone up there. Jordan, go for it. It was just about the the, the feeling of the excitement. I, I think you've sort of covered that, but yeah, I don't, I don't think, it was a whole lot of excitement. You know, it was it was a lot of emotions going on in that game, especially from the beginning. You know, because it was a, it was a real back and forth game, but. And once we started to pull away, we, we just knew we just knew that was a great team on the other end. So we just kept going. And once once confetti came down, it was it was a whole lot of emotion going on. We're understanding that was the first time in Grambling history. So we just got to keep going. Let's go to the back row there. Jay Gonzalez, uh, University of Dayton. Um, for both of you, obviously, you know, making history, being here uh, the first time in Grambling history to to make the NCAA tournament. Have you taken a moment to kind of let that set in and and what that means, Jordan? Um, I've, I've been trying to take a moment to let it set in, but it, it still hasn't kicked in yet. But I, but I feel like once we get on the court and step on the court, I feel like it'll kick in. Yeah. Uh, Michael. Oh uh, yeah. Um, I'm think, think think I'm still still in the moment. You no, know, it's a real, real great feeling. Like you no, know, it ain't never been done in ground. So to be the first to do that it really feels good. Let's go to the third row. Patrick Sabusky, University of Dayton. Um, what does it mean to you to be able to represent HBCUs on a big stage like this? Jermichael? Uh It means a, it means a lot, you know. Uh, just being being here really, just being uh, being here feels great, and uh, you know, uh, being the first to do this is really a great feeling, and uh, I'm, I'm just on in a moment. Jordan, it's a real good feeling, you know. Especially with uh, with the situation that we're in, being the first school, being the first basketball team in our program to be here, so that just gives us even more of a reason to go harder and show everybody what, what we have to, uh, to prove. Second row on the end, uh, Marcus Hartman, Dayton Daily News. I, for both of you guys, why did you want to play for Coach Jackson? Jordan, um, Coach Jackson. Since the day I met him, he was just a real stand-up guy. He, I, I knew from the day I met him that it was all love, you know. He told me coming in when I uh, transferred here, like, you're a great player, but at the same time, you have to work for everything you have. And and, at the, and also, he's always been there for me with everything I've been through, so. Jermichael on coach. Um, uh, he came, um, came to my high school games, you know, um, built a relationship with me, uh, and made him like family, you know, came to the games and everything, and it's close to home. Chris, another question on Zoom? Uh, yes. Hey, uh, Jordan, um, obviously, have you got, or anyone up there, have you guys had a chance to look at Montana State? And if so, what really stands out about the Grizzlies? Jordan? Um, yeah, we, we've uh, watched a couple games on them, and we seem like I mean, it's a lot of shooters on their team. So, you know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of, uh, they go, they go, they play a, a lot of a high paced game. So, we just have to uh, play defense, get them, stop the ball, get them running at a half court pace. And I feel like if we get them going at a half court pace, then that's more of our game because our game is stopping them and getting them in transits and our own offense. 
Jermichael, preparing for uh, Montana State. Um, yeah, I uh, watched a couple games. No, no, they like to uh, shoot shoot a lot. But it's going to come down to who really wants it and who's going to get the most stops. Jermichael, you were named uh, MVP of the uh, SWAC tournament. Um, talk a little bit about that experience, but more importantly, w what happened in that semifinal game when you really sort of caught fire and, and the feeling of having a game to where it seems like everything's going in? Uh, at that time, I know it was just uh, – I just felt like we needed a push. And uh, I feel like, you know, I had to do that to get my team, you know, happy and ready to just take over. Jordan, and, and sort of following up on that question to Tremichael, talk about your balance because it seems like uh, you know where he he's the guy scoring the basketball uh, against Bethune Cookman in the championship game. You you were scoring the basketball. It seems like you got a lot of different guys that can put the ball in the hoop. I mean, you know, with this team, like coming out coming into any game with with the type of guys we have, you honestly really never know who's going to be the leading scorer. So it was just it was just that moment where that that day the shots were falling for me. So you know I just had to be more aggressive and like you said the shots falls with T Mike. That's the shoot, So I'm gonna give him the ball. It was just it was just that game. From from last year's championship team in the regular season to then this year's uh, championship team in the regular season of the tournament, what 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 what's sort of the difference from from a year ago? Um. I feel like well last year like it was we had more we had older guys so everybody kind of knew everybody was everybody kind of knew coming into the game what the game plan was what what was going on like it was more of a it was more of a mature thing but this year like it was more young guys so it was kind of it was kind of a teaching moment at the beginning but once we brought in like I, I felt like it was it was nearly the same thing you know everybody was just going hard for each other once everybody once everybody connected in on on one belief. It was, it was the same team and we got the same result. Other questions for our student athletes. Gentlemen, a historic year. Congratulations. We're really excited to watch you tomorrow night. Good luck. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. just jumped in late like I think I think he came on oh yeah uh huh uh well that's what I'm saying I think he came in late to where he like oh my gosh yeah Now we welcome to the stage the head coach at Grambling State and Dante Jackson, Coach of the Year in the SWAC and 2003 graduate of Central State just down the road. Coach, welcome home. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, before we get questions from our audience, uh, this historic moment for your program and, and your excitement of being here at the first four. Man, an incredible moment. Uh, just incredible. Uh, still kind of lost for words. Uh, just it, it's, it's been going so fast. So uh, just just happy to be here, uh, ready to compete, ready to do what we do, and kind of go from there. Questions for the head coach at Grambling State. Let's go to the second row. Hi there, Coach. Parker Cotton from the Bozeman Daily Chronicle. Um, your players are up here, and they, they just said that uh, – one of their main team identities is built on defense predicated on you know, winning on that side of the ball. Can you tell us what that looks like day to day and how that has been uh, maybe a, a key to your season? Uh, that's, uh, you know, that, that's something we live by. I always try to tell them that uh, I can't tell them if uh, you're going to make shots day to day. But I can tell you how hard you can play, and I can tell you that we can defend at a high level and rebound at a high level. Where, that's kind of our identity. Every day we're going to come in that first hour of practice, they know we're going to do all type of defensive drills. We're going to get after it and, you know, we're going to compete against each other. So when we go onto the court, it's not a problem competing.
go to the last row. Hi, Coach. Uh, Katie Gonzalez, University of Dayton. Um, you know, your student athletes talked about the experience of already being here and playing in a game at UD Arena earlier this year. What was your mindset with that schedule, and, and how do you think that's going to prepare, prepare your team for tomorrow night? Uh, coming into the year, uh, after going 24-9, and nine, you, you try to find people to play. <laughs> Not quite easy. You know, you go 24-9, and nine and, you know, I was talking to uh, coach over here at Dayton, uh, and we were just talking back and forth, and he said, you know what, let's go, let's go play. Because my goal was to be here anyways. So it was just, I knew this was where the first four is held. I know Dayton's a tough opponent. We're going to see somebody probably like Dayton at some point in time. So we got to kind of prepare and, and get ourselves ready. So it was just really more of a schedule and understanding the goal at the end of the year. Second row in the middle. Coach, uh, Austin Parr with SWX Montana. First off, congrats on, on being coach of the year. Um, players spoke on it a little bit, but uh, what was the main difference between last year's team and this year's team, you know, losing by three in the championship last year versus getting it done this year? Uh, the main the difference between this year team and last year team for the most part is youth. Uh, we're playing three or four sophomores majority of the time, and early in the year, it was an adjustment period for them to get acclimated. Some came from junior college, some uh, transferred from Division ones, didn't play a lot. So you kind of got to get those guys acclimated to the, the expectations that, that we have here at Grambling. And then on the other end of it, just more of a, just more about we were a senior-led team last year, and so many different seniors was ready to step up. And the main difference in the championship game this year is that we had four juniors or five juniors that returned that were seniors, and they remembered that pain. And at the end of the day, you know, they didn't want to lose, you know, that, that, that another time around. Because it's not always that you get to the championship game. So when you get those moments, you got to take advantage of them. Back corner, far side. Hi, Coach. Uh, Keaton Globally, Bobcat Sports Properties. Uh, beyond the basketball, Grambling State, what makes it special and what should the nation know about it? Uh, Grambling State, what makes it special? I mean, the history of Grambling and the tradition of Grambling makes it special. When you think about the history and tradition, that you first you start off with Coach Eddie Robinson. Coach Rob was, uh, I mean, one of the most incredible coaches to ever walk this face of the earth. So every time, you know, I'm on campus, I always feel like I'm walking around greatness from Coach Rob to Doug Williams to Coach Hobby, who is the basketball coach who's the most wins, who has the most wins in the state of Louisiana. I mean, it's, it, it's just a lot of tradition at Grambling, a lot of tradition, and it's the – it is exactly what our university slogan is. It is where everybody is somebody. <laughs> Let's go to the second row. Parker Cotton with the Bozeman Daily Chronicle again. Um, Coach, can you take us through what the last you know, 48 hours or so have been like in terms of preparation for Montana State? What does that film study look like and what stands out about this team that you're gonna have to be mindful of? I mean, our, our, our preparation has been uh, advanced. We, we've been rolling since Sunday. So uh, a lot of things that stand out is that the fact that they're really hot right now. They're playing some of their best basketball that they played all year. They pretty much kind of, they, they kind of figured out the sink. They figured it out right now. And the one thing we got to do a good job of is just, you know, they shoot the ball at a high level and we got to do a good job of controlling Jones. Jones does a lot to really set everybody else up. So, you know, it's, it's a tough game. You know, a lot of respect for Montana State. I mean, three NCAA tournaments. I know Coach Sprinkle started it, but uh, Coach Loki, I hope I'm not saying his name wrong, uh, pick right up. I mean, pick right up, and, and, and it's still rolling. So, I mean, just a, just an incredible program. And, you know, it's like I told – I seen Coach, we were both walking. I'm walking into practice. They're walking out of practice. I said, man, you would put, they would put us against the hottest team in the country. Like, come on now. Like, <laughs> like, seriously. But at the end of the day, a lot of respect for him and what he's done. You know, like for me, Division Two. Division two, figuring it out, trying to get the division one for him. I want to say division two, maybe D three, division two, and then get the division one. So, hey, you know, a lot of respect for him because you know it's, it's, it's a tough grind. You know, it's not as easy. These jobs don't come by very easy. So, you got to win, and people got to respect what you're doing. Second row in the middle. Hey, coach Marcus Hartman from the Dayton Daily News. Uh, I know you've said that Dayton is kind of like a second home for you. Uh, so I wonder, you know, can you expand on that for everybody here? And then also just how did Central State sort of start you on this path? Uh, yeah, Dayton is second home. Uh, met my wife here. Uh, had my kids here. <laughs> like, uh, spent 15 years here uh, from, two, from 1999 to 2014. I spent 15 years here, uh, you know, 
grew up as a man. You know, I was born and raised in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, but I grew up as a man here in Dayton. So Dayton is like definitely a second home. So uh, you know, I expect a lot of people from Central to show up today. You know, just have some you know some pride just because hey, this, this is what it's about. So we always support our own. We'll jump online via Zoom. Uh, Matt, your question for Coach. Matt Donaldson, Rustin Daily Leader. Coach, it seems like March Madness every single year, there's always a team that kind of takes the nation by storm, you know, one of these lower seeds. I guess, um, do you talk about that with your group, just like you said, taking advantage of this opportunity and kind of, you know, putting putting the nation on notice of what Grambling is? Do you talk about that? Uh, you know, I don't know if we're taking the nation by storm, but... <laughs> You know, at the end of the day, I mean, the, the main thing is just coming out here and showcasing a good brand of basketball that we play. You know, we're, we're going to be a, a strong defensive-minded team. We're going to get after it. And, you know, we just want to make sure we play our best basketball. This is the time that you want to play your best basketball and you want to make sure that you're doing whatever it takes to stay, stay in this tournament. Chris, a question for Coach via Zoom? Coach, uh, K, uh, Chris Demersion out of KSLA TV in Shreveport. Uh, Hey, Coach, first of all, how many ticket requests have you, have you gotten from uh, Dayton since you got up there? And uh, B, uh, what, who does Montana State remind you of offensively and defensively out of the team you played this season? Uh, ticket requests? Sheesh. I mean, uh, I, <laughs> I had to make the Facebook and the Instagram posts. I don't have very limited, very limited, limited, limited tickets. Just please come support. Uh, so definitely got a lot of ticket requests, you know. Family, friends, college teammates, uh, advisors, professors. Hey, it's, a, it's a big moment. So, you know, it, you don't really realize how big of a moment it is at the end of the day until it's – you look at it, you got like 300 text messages. <laughs> so, totally different. Uh, but when I, when I look at when – I, when, I, when I watch Montana, uh, they remind me of a team that we lost to, Pine Bluff. Uh, Pine Bluff came in made 15 threes against us, really, really, really shot the ball well against us. Pine Bluff had four people in double figures that could score at a, at a high level. And when I look at this team, it's kind of the same type thing. They got guys that shoot it at a high level, uh, two different big men that can finish at the rim, one big man that's kind of, you know, a, a mismatch problem. He's playing on the perimeter, then he's posting you up, he's dribbling it in from the perimeter. You got this other 16 kid that's catching alley-oops everywhere. So. At the end of the day, you know, we got to do a good job of just playing defense and, and you know, uh, you know, playing our best basketball. Coulter, another question for Coach on Zoom. Hey, Coach, Coulter Nuanas from ESPN Montana and Skyline Sports. You mentioned just the, the tradition at Grambling State from Eddie Robinson to Doug Williams to the awesome marching band. How do you hope this sort of puts the basketball team into that tradition? And what do you think of this opportunity to show Grambling State basketball to the to the rest of the country. Phenomenal opportunity for us to show the show show our show our brand of basketball. Uh, I always say, you know, when you walk at Grambling, you, you know you're at a football school. <laughs> There's no if, no ends, no buts. <laughs> like it, you know. But at the, I also want people to understand we play good basketball uh, at Grambling. Also, it's, it's some good basketball that's going on. Uh, and I also want to know, hey, we we trying to change it to being a basketball school. Also, this is a uh, three conference championships in seven years. Unfortunately, you know, my first year we won the, the regular season title. We had APR issues when I inherited the program. We don't have them issues anymore. Uh, last year we were in a championship game. This year we actually won the championship game. So I want to I want to feel like we're, we're, we're making our own basketball history now and we're trying to set the tradition where basketball is going to be great for a long time. Coach, do you have a favorite March Madness moment? Um, I got a lot of them, man. I mean, Hakeem Ward blocking the shot. Homer Drew making, I mean, uh, Jacoza, uh, uh, Drew making a shot. I mean, there's so many moments, man. I'm, uh, you know, I was just in awe just having an interview with Coach Beheim back there. Like, hey, it's Coach Beheim. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And the bad part is, you know, you see him out recruiting all the time and you do, you know, all the good stuff. But, you know, it's a high and by thing. But to really sit down and have a, t a moment to really t to speak with Coach Beheim and, you know, I'm sitting there like, hey, man, I buy all your DVDs on championship productions, you know. I'm, you know, just a, you know, a guy that just want to keep learning about the game and, you know, pick somebody else's brain and figure out what else it is to know. But hey, it's a lot of good moments. Uh, I'm hoping we can create our own moment. Chris, another question for Coach. 
Yes, Coach, uh, Chris Demers at a KSLA in Shreveport. Uh, Coach, after last year's hurt, how much pain did you guys go through last year after losing the championship game by a few points? And what went into each and every practice, each and every game of the season? What was the mentality, uh, especially going to the SWAC championship game this year? Uh, it was a lot of pain. You know, to see a guy like Cam Christian who stayed, who probably could have went to several different schools, stayed and finished out the journey to be player of the year. Uh, Shondarius Coward uh, come in two-year transfer, just really become a great leader. You know, watch those guys cry. That was tough. Uh, nobody likes losing, especially when you're a competitor. Uh, but every day in practice, we, we came with it. It was a fight. So that's why we're here. Coulter, another question for Coach. Yeah, hey, Coach Coulter, New Orleans, Skyline Sports and ESPN MT. Uh, can you talk about your non-conference schedule and how you think you, that prepared this team for – for the, the nice run that you've gone on now here the, these last couple of weeks? Well, I feel like we have one of the toughest non-conference schedules in the country. <laughs> uh, what, let's say Colorado, they're in the tournament. Dayton, they're in the tournament. Uh, Washington State, they're in the tournament. Uh, Iowa State, they're in the tournament. Drake, they're in the tournament. <laughs> uh, Sam Houston State won their league. Uh, Troy, third in the Sun Belt. So, no days off, uh, even Delaware State. Finishing the uh, finals of the MEAC. <laughs> so it's like, hey, no days off for us. And I, I knew that was going to happen, but that was what, it, you know, that, that I wanted that schedule so we could be prepared for this. We wanted to be, make sure it was tough as possible. So when the moments came, you know, we, we were ready. Second row in the middle. Hi, Marcus Hartman, Dayton Daily News. Uh, there's been some, a lot of talk out there about possibly making some changes to the tournament I don't know, with auto bids, maybe expanding it. I just wonder from your perspective, you know, why would you say, if you say, that it's important to kind of, you know, have all these different schools that are able to mingle and be part of this stage? Uh, at times I'm a purist. <laughs> You'd be like, let's just play the 64. But then you start seeing the 68, makes sense. 72 may make some sense. And, you know, that you want to see as many uh, teams as you know, possible get this opportunity because this is a major opportunity to be playing uh, year 68 of, what, 360-something. I don't know. It keeps changing and fluctuating. But I just think that at the end of the day, man, as many opportunities as possible is great. And not too many where you water it down, but, you know, as many opportunities as possible. One of the things that I didn't like is the kind of the format change in NIT because – you know, winning a regular season title should be should, should be held to the highest regard. I mean, you go play somebody and on their home court and you play them on your home court, then if you win in that round-robin situation, that should be held high. But when now that, you know, you, the automatic – I guess there's not an automatic bid to the NIT anymore, that's, that's, that's tough. So, hopefully, you know, we, we can kind of revisit that eventually. I think that should change because I think you should reward winning the regular season title. I think that's important. And a follow-up question to that, Coach, you mentioned how hard it is to win a regular season title. You guys have been able to do that now two years in a row in the SWAC. And being able to come into the tournament, there weren't many teams in this field that were able to accomplish both the regular season and tournament. Just talk about that accomplishment of, of your group and, and, and trying to achieve a goal and then being able to go out and accomplish it. Oh, it's tough. I mean, it's tough. Uh, as they say, it's rough in the sweat. <laughs> so every day it's, it's competitive. Uh, and to be able to, to win both is, man, it's, it's an amazing accomplishment for, for our group. And we wanted that number one seat, like all year long, we wanted that number one seat because we felt like having a two seat, it was such a disadvantage. We end up playing, we finished our game at close to. 11 o'clock at night, you still got to get food, get guys sleep, and you turn around and play at four. And it was like, no, we want the number one seat. We want to play the early game and have all day to rest. So we want that. It was kind of a mission we was on, and you was just happy we completed the mission. Chris, another question on Zoom for Coach. Oh, no, I'm good. I'm good, sir. I'm good. Other questions in the audience? Let's go to the second row in the middle. Marcus Hartman, Dayton Daily News. I'm curious, just kind of, what are some of the differences between Division Two and Division One 
uh, no matter what level you're at Division One. How would you describe that? Well, the Division Two tournament ain't this. <laughs> <laughs> now it's been a, it's been a blessing, man. Uh, you know, I've been to the Division Two tournament. Uh, now I'm in the Division One tournament. Uh, you know, it's uh, travel is totally different between Division Two, Division One because it's more of a regional situation. Being Division One, especially in our situation, we go play money games and whatnot. So travel all over across the country to play. You know, whether it's California, New York, Middle America, wherever you go, you go do what you got to do. But uh, Division Two is just more regional. I mean, basketball is basketball. There's good players all over, you know. And as you start to see with the transfer portals, you start to see some Division Two players pop in Division One, playing really well. And you know, it's, it's players everywhere. So, regardless of the fact, basketball is basketball. You gotta score more to somebody and stop somebody from scoring. So, it is what it is. Other questions for Coach? Coach, congratulations on an amazing season. We're looking for it to continue tomorrow night as your group goes up against Montana State. Best of luck. All right, thank you for having me. You have a blessing.
again, a, a reminder to folks, so uh, please uh, put your cell phone on silent as we conduct uh, our interviews. Also, if you have a question, we ask that you state your name and media affiliation before addressing the question uh, for each question that you have. And then if you're ju using Zoom, uh, the hand feature, we'll see it and uh, we'll make sure that we'll throw and you can ask your question as student athletes and coaches. And then also, uh, recording of the press conference on cell phones or cameras is prohibited. Uh, so we ask that you please not record uh, on your cell phone. We thank you for your cooperation. this time, we're really excited to welcome the Montana State Bobcats out of the big sky. This is the third straight trip to the NCAA tournament uh, for Montana State as they were the champions of the big sky tournament and beating Weber State, Sacramento State, and then winning the championship game against Montana. Uh, in the middle, defensive player of the year, first team all big sky and the most outstanding player of the Big Sky Tournament, Robert Ford III. To his right, uh, all-tournament team, uh, Brian Goraki, and then uh, Tyler Patterson also joining us. Um, Robert, we'll start uh, before we open things up to questions. Just your excitement being back in the NCAA Tournament. <clears throat> I mean, for me, it's my second time here. Uh, it just feels amazing. Brian, the same question. Uh, yeah, this is my first time here at the Division One level. Um, we made the tournament last year and hosted a regional at Point Loma, um, which was a great experience. But it's you know it's cool to be here on the big stage. Tyler, um, yeah, this is my third year, and you know just trying to stay in the moment, take it all in. Questions for our student athletes. Let's go second row in the middle. Uh, 
Um, Grace Lawrence, Montana uh, Television Network. Brian, you mentioned your jump from Point Loma to Montana State. Uh, what has the experience been like sharing that with Coach Logie on this stage? Yeah, it's been really special. You know, when you get to, you know, follow a coach, it's a unique experience. Um, you know, some of the guys that were here last year got to do that with Utah State. Um, and I've just been really thankful that, you know, he's believed in me. I've trusted his vision for this program. And, uh, you know, we've made it to this point in the year. And um, I, I'd say it's successful so far. Follow-up question? Oh. Yeah. Uh, you guys have got just so hot at the end of the regular season uh, into the tournament. What what clicked in March, Brian? Yeah, uh, you know, the whole season you're building towards the end of the year, and we just want to make sure we're at our best when it counts. Um, and then especially in a conference that has a single bid, is a single bid conference uh, like the Big Sky, you know, we want to just have, give ourselves the best chance to make this run at the end um, and then win those three games in March and then make it here. We'll stay in the second row. Parker Cotton from the Bozeman Daily Chronicle. For Rob and Tyler, can you speak to what the preparation for Grambling State has been in the last two days or so since Sunday? Rob? <clears throat> uh, just, you know, like Tyler said, just staying in a moment and then, you know, following our scout on what we have, you know, prepare for them. Tyler? Uh, yeah, just been watching a lot of film and then, um, you know, seeing their actions and stuff like that, getting familiar with them. Follow-up question? Are there any players that stick out or any kind of tendencies that they have that you know you're going to have to be mindful of? Tyler? Um, yeah, they play uh, really aggressive defense. Um, that's one thing that we've seen that's standing out. Um, so, you know, we just got to take care of the ball and um, be us. Other questions? Yeah, go for it. Rob, <coughs> Parker Cotton from the Bozeman Daily Chronicle again. Rob, uh, I know that you had your two previous championship rings uh, uh, on, with you on Sunday. I see you have one here now. Uh, did they just go everywhere with you now? And, and how, kind of a, how much of a motivating thing is it to have it here with you? Uh, it's just you know, understanding, I guess, the process and you know, always being remembered of it. So I guess it's, you know, it's a big thing. But I mean, right now, we're just one, you know, one game at a time. So we're trying to just focus on. Wednesday. Uh, Grace Lawrence, Montana Television Network. Tyler, can you talk about uh, maybe the difference of playing a first four game this time around, what the experience in Dayton has been like looking ahead to tomorrow night? Um, yeah, it's been awesome. Um, it's been a little bit different. Obviously, it's a different circumstance than last year. Um, but yeah, you know, you try to um, take it, you know, day at a time and then um, do your same preparation for a team that you would as if we were last year um, and then try to get a win. Let's uh, jump on Zoom. Coulter, your question for our student athletes. Hey guys, Coulter Nuanas, ESPN Montana and Skyline Sports. Uh, for both Rob and Tyler, playing in this first four a little different than the experiences you guys had the last couple of years. So uh, first of all, what do you think of just the opportunity of, of this? You're obviously putting your program on a big stage, but this is going to be a game that everybody in the country is sort of focused in on and watching singularly. So what do you think of that opportunity? What do you think of this chance for Montana State? Tyler? Um, yeah, it's a great opportunity for sure. You know, um, you know, we think it's, you know, a winnable game and something that we can, um, you know, hopefully get an, an advance on, so. Rob? Uh, you know, kind of like Tyler said, it's a great opportunity and, you know, we just focus on, on the game, I would say, most part. Second row? Awesome par, SWX, uh, Montana, Rob, you know, from last year to this year, your role has grown so much. So, you know, what has that kind of experience been like? Uh, you're kind of like, you know, the man for this team now. Um, I mean, it's been a big change. Um, I had to step into a leader role right away. Um, but, you know, I feel like we have a lot of weapons. You know, there's a lot of people on our team that can show up any any given day. So, you know, the, me knowing that we have that, it helps. We'll stay in the second row on, on the end. Parker Cotton with the Bozeman Daily Chronicle again. Brian, you've spoken at length, you know, this season of your own transition from D2 to Division One, having played with or played for Coach Logie before. Have you seen any kind of changes in him, whether you know that's his process or his demeanor, or, or has he stayed consistent, you know, in, in any kind of way? Just what have you seen from him over the last, you know, the 11 months or so since he's been? Uh, I say for the time I've known him, he's stayed true to himself and his principles. Um, you know, every team you have different personnel, so you have to adapt your style of play a little bit to, you know, the best suit the team, um, but overall his philosophy really hasn't changed, um, and I think you've seen that he's had success at the Division Three level, 
uh, Division Two and Division One. So, second row in the middle. Awesome par, uh, SWX Montana. Tyler and Rob, uh, you guys have been here before, obviously the last couple of years. But what sticks out about this team compared to maybe the last two? Tyler. Um, yeah, I think I think we're you know very balanced. I think we have um, you know a system that allows you know certain players to um, fit um, differently than in the past, and I think you know that sticks out in terms of how how other teams guard us, and um, so I think you know that, that's something that we're really well balanced. Rob, I just think we have a you know just just a different type of a game plan uh, with you know Coach Logie's philosophies and coming into it with our defensive principles. I think it's going to help us. Let's go to the fourth row in the back. Keaton Glogley, Bobcat Sports Properties. Uh, two questions. Uh, first, for uh, for Brian, uh, when it comes to Coach Logie, I mean you've been in a lot of championship environments with him. Uh, what what stands out about how he handles those championship environments? What do you value in his coaching uh, coaching style for these types of moments? Yeah, well, the, the process never changed. Um, you know, winning is winning takes what it takes. So we prepare for every game like we want to win it, um, and then we get to the playoffs. It's the same. It's the same. Um, same scout, same prep, same everything. You know, just try to try to win the game. Second question. Uh, I mean, it's obviously been a roller coaster ride this season. What would you guys say was the low point of the year, and, and how did you guys bounce back from that? Brian, you want to start? Uh, yeah, I would say there were probably two. We had a, a road trip where we went to South Dakota, got beat up pretty bad. Um, it was kind of a little bit of a wake up call that we need to get a lot better. Um, and then just recently in February, we had a stretch where we lost four games in a row. Um, so. One thing I've really appreciated about this group is we always bounce back from adversity. Every time we've had a low point, it's followed by high. Um, I think that really showed the way we ended this season. Had a lot of urgency to, to get to that championship in the big sky and then win it. Rob? <clears throat> I would say, yeah, that low point would probably be that four game stretch of us. You know, it got tough and we didn't know, you know, really what to, what to expect. But, you know, every day our team came in with looking to get better. And I think that's what helped us, you know, get, you know, prosper through and get past it. And Tyler. Yeah, I, I would agree that that four game stretch was um, probably the low point. And then, you know, us being able to get back in the gym every day and come come back with the same same attitude that coach preaches and, um, you know, get hot at the end of the year. Second row. Grace Lawrence, MTN Sports. Tyler, you've been here the longest and it seemed like this week your team coined the motto, the good old days, because of how dominant you guys have been the past three to four years. Why is Montana State basketball so dominant in this decade and what does that speak to the culture of your program? Yeah, you know, I think it, I think it has to do with everything with culture. You know, it starts from, you know, administration and, and the way, you know, that they have hired the last two coaches and um, the visions that both of them had um, and, the, you know, the way that they helped us, you know, execute their plan. And, um, you know, thankful for us, it's been, you know, three really good years. Other questions for our student athletes? Brian, uh, we, we heard a couple of stories yesterday, uh, Division Two talking with Colorado State um, head coach at Grambling was just talking about sort of D3, D2, and, and sort of living it, playing in it, and being able to excel with, like, basketball. Can you sort of talk about the journey of, of winning, you know, from, from last year and then, then coming here and performing at a high level and being the NCAA tournament of the Division One rank? Mm -hmm. Well, I want to give a lot, you know a lot of credit to. There's a lot of really good small college basketball players out there, you know, um, and then we just winning takes what it takes, um, and it, at any level it's hard. So whether that's Division three, NAIA, Division two, like winners are winners, and that's that's how it is. Um, so when we get opportunities like this to move up, um, and we take them, uh, you know, it's we just keep doing what we're doing, keep doing what got us here, um, and then that's that's how we be successful and just trust the process. Let's go back to the second row at the end. Parker Cotton with the Bozeman Daily Chronicle. For either of you guys uh, that maybe has an opinion, um, there's been a lot of talk you know, in recent months or, or years about the possibility of this tournament expanding to be more than 68 teams. Um, do, do players, you know, do you guys have any kind of opinion on that? Because it seems like it might be something that may not benefit the big sky, but you know, would benefit a lot of other teams. Do you guys playing at this level? Does that impact you guys much, Brian? I didn't even know there, were, didn't even know there was talks of that. Me either. <laughs> yeah, 
But I think I, I think it will, I'll speak on it. I think it will speak to like um, it allows more teams to get in, allows more people to be seen. So I think you know it could be a good thing. Let's go to the fourth row. Connor McDonough, UD student man, sports media. Uh, the Big Sky over the past few years has had some of the biggest name transfers come about out of it. How do you guys, being the faces of the league lately, recruit those talents to stay in conference? Rob? Um, I, you know, I think it's tough, but you know, ultimately just building a family, like, you know, scene. Um, I think we had a lot of players come through here that um, stay, you know, one Jabril, um, you know, he had a really, you know, really good season. He ended up staying and the thing that he stuck out, that stuck out to him the most, he told me was just like, it felt like family, a place he couldn't leave. So I think that's like the biggest thing. Tyler? Yeah, I think, um, you know, for us at Montana State, it's just that culture. Um, and that, that, you know, that started with, like you said, you know, Jabril, um, you know, Ahmed Adamu, those guys, my first year, and then, um, you know, it kind of trickles on its way down. But, you know, for us, it's just that, that culture that, we, you know, we've built. Um, and yeah, that really helps. Yeah. Brian? Uh, I'll echo what these guys talked about, you know, that family and culture feeling of, um, you know, when you pour a lot of, a lot of effort into something, you know, you want stick to stick with it and respect it. Um, so yeah, I would say that's probably a big reason that people would want to stay. Let's go back to the second row. Parker Cotton from the Bozeman Daily Chronicle. I'll follow up on that question. I thought it was really, uh, really well thought out. I'm curious, you know, as far as being the faces of the big sky, um, anybody tuning into the tournament has seen this program for the last three years or, or will. Um, how, how seriously do you guys take that, knowing that you are representing this one bid league? And maybe especially as a 16 seed now. Tyler? Um, you know, I think we take great pride in that. You know, I think, um, you know, going back on, you know, the, the previous question, you know, one of the things, you know, that helps us, peop, uh, us keep players is, you know, the opportunities that we've been getting the last three years making the tournament. Um, so, you know, I think that's something that is, is really valuable for players to see. Um, and so, yeah, we take great pride in that. Rob? Uh, <clears throat> I agree with Tyler. Um, just taking, you know, good pride on that and understanding that, you know, some stuff is bigger than us, you know. I think it's important to keep in mind, you know, everybody else that we competed against that helped us get to this level, right? Like we, we grew throughout the year playing against these other big sky teams. So it's also a credit to the conference as a whole that we've, you know, we've made it. Question in the middle. Uh, SWX Montana, um, for Tyler, any of you guys, uh, going back to that tough four game stretch, uh, the, the shooting was a little cold as well. And then you guys turned it around and got really hot. So what changed, if anything, uh, you know, leading up to the tournament and during the tournament? Tyler? Um, you know, I, I wouldn't say a ton changed. I think, you know, the coaches always have had, you know, the belief in us as players. Um, and so, you know, we just get stick through, you know, through the hard times and the good, um, you know, and then get hot at the right time. And, you know, I, I wouldn't say anything really changed. I'd just say, you know, we get back in the gym, Stuff like that getting wraps up and then uh, it translates. Rob? Um, I would say just, you know, being confident. I think that was one thing that I seen that changed a little bit, um, especially with myself going into the tournament of I understood that, you know, I had to be, you know, confident to have everyone else follow behind me. So doing that, I feel like everyone else, you know, stepped up, made really good shots, you know, especially these two guys to my right and left. Brian. Yeah. Uh, I mean it's partially a lot of percentages, you know. You know, you put in the work, um, you're confident in your shot, um, and then you know, you miss some shots, you make some shots, that's the game, but you know, it all balances out in the end. Rob, Brian, Tyler, congratulations on um another fantastic championship and uh, three times now. I know not all of you have participated in them, but that's something to be said about Montana State. We're Really excited to watch you guys play, um, and we uh, are looking forward to tomorrow night. Good luck. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it.
At this time, really excited to welcome Matt Logie, the head coach of Montana State in his first year, has the Bobcats in the NCAA tournament. And like mentioned before, it is their third straight year. Uh, coach, congratulations. Um, before we get to questions, uh, y your thoughts on this team and what they've been able to accomplish in your first season. Yeah, thank you. Uh, obviously, a, a joy to be here. Um, this is a group that has had a special, special journey to get here. Um, you know, we, we took over last spring uh, around the end of April and had a, a ton of ton of work to do in, um, you know, completing the roster. Um, number one, building a staff um, and then, you know, redesigning uh, with with that roster in mind, you know, how Montana State was going to look uh, moving forward. And so uh, this team has has made it, me so proud in the way that they've um, stuck to the process and, uh, you know, continued to, to keep their eyes focused on on March as the goal for playing our best basketball. And, and the way that that's all come together in the last few weeks has been just a, a joy and a testament to the character of our of our players and staff. Questions for coach. The second row on the end. Hey there, coach Parker Cotton from the Bozeman Daily Chronicle. Can you take us through what the preparation for Grambling has has looked like in the past 48 hours or so? You know, since you l learned that that's your opponent, what jumps out about them on film that you know you're going to have to be mindful of? Yeah, uh, thank goodness for Synergy Sports. Uh, you know, the ability to, to turn that that page right away and and, and dive into the film um, is obviously extremely helpful. Um, they're a team that, that is also playing really, really good basketball. They've won nine of their last ten games. Um, they have a veteran backcourt that is very dynamic and Dozier and Moten. And, and so um, they, they very much know who they are. Um, they, they, they've been, you know, a team that has been, you know, executing and running their system, um, you know, throughout the year, uh, you know, all the way back to November, December uh, at a very high level. Um, and they're and they're well tested. You know, they they played a lot of uh, high major opponents in the non-conference, and and you learn a lot about yourself in those in those scenarios. And then um, obviously, I've had a ton of success. You know, in in, in conference play uh, as of late. So um, very impressive team. You know, a group that uh, plays extremely hard and knows who they are. Second row. Uh, Grace Lawrence, MTN Sports. Hi, Coach. Um, Talking about that uh, final stretch to end the regular season into the Big Sky Tournament, John Olmstead stepping into such a huge role off the bench. Can you just talk about what he's meant to the team? Yeah, John's a, a great story. Um, a, a young man that you know walked on for four years at Arizona State, um, played played the role of a, of a great teammate for four years on the scout team, and 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 poured into his own development process, hoping to sometime uh, you know crack into a rotational uh, player. Uh, obviously, with with COVID giving him an, an extra opportunity, he, he joined us at Montana State last spring and um, has just been an outstanding teammate. Um, had kind of an up and down year um, in, in the opportunities that he was given, uh, but ultimately, you know, just needed the ability to to play through some of those mistakes and things that he didn't have the luxury of doing in his previous situations. And so, um, couldn't be prouder of of him <coughs> of him for uh, the example that he set as a teammate. Um, and it's a great story, you know, for, for the rest of our, of our uh, young men in, in sticking to it and um, being, being prepared for your opportunity and, and never stopping um, believing in yourself and, and being prepared. Uh, he has completely changed the dynamic of, of, our, of our team here in the last couple of weeks uh, with his play and, and, and really given us a, a boost and a lift that uh, has been special to watch. Follow-up question? Just to share uh, this moment with him as he's ending his collegiate career, what has it meant to you as a coach? Oh, it's a, a beautiful storyline. I mean, uh, going into senior night, he had had pretty much one breakout game at Eastern Washington. And I think, you know, in, in his own mind even, um, that was proof of concept, you know, that he could he could do it and, and that all that time and all that hard work was worth it. Um, and I told him, you know, as he walked off the court as senior, I said, you know, the best is still yet to come. And, you know, when that's your senior night, your last game in your, in your home arena, um, that may sound, you know, a little unique <laughs> to, to hear. Um, but it certainly came true last week in Boise um, as he continued to play at, a, at an extremely high level. Second row in the middle. 
Uh, yeah, Austin Parr, SWX Montana head coach. Um, we were talking with the guys about the, the low point of the season, that four-game losing streak, something that you've never experienced as a head coach, and they gave you a lot of credit for keeping that confidence. So how were you able to keep the confidence in the locker room and then obviously, you know, turn it around and go on this amazing run? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, again, I, I would I would point the credit towards our players. Um, you know, I try to be consistent in, in, in who I am and, and what, what they can expect on a daily basis. Um, I think the... The biggest underlying message of, of this team has been their ability to, to not overly focus on results, but focus on the process at hand to, to achieve the results that we, we desire. And, um, you know, th there were definitely some valleys in, you know, the four game losing streak being one. But uh, when you come back from that and, and you've got, you know, your second largest home crowd of the year waiting for you to pick you up off the deck, uh, that made a huge, huge impact on our young men and on our program. Um, the community support in Bozeman has just been phenomenal, um, and they have not allowed us to, uh, to to wallow in in the disappointment of of, of short term results, and to stay focused on what can be accomplished um, long term. And um, you know, this is for all those all those folks that, that helped us in those moments. Jump online via Zoom, uh, Coulter. Question for Coach. Hi, Matt Coulter, New Orleans, ESPN Montana, and Skyline Sports. What do you think of just this dynamic of playing in the first four? I mean, you guys will be the first game in this whole tournament. So all eyes on Montana State and Grambling State. What do you think of that opportunity for your program and the university? Yeah, it's an exciting opportunity. Uh, obviously comes with a, a lot of exposure for, for our, our basketball family and um, for our young men, uh, which is well-deserved. Uh, it's also an opportunity to, to keep the momentum going that we've built here in the last couple of weeks, I think. Uh, you know, the, the more games we can play the, as soon as possible, the better. Um, the more I can get out of their way and, and uh, not have to hear my voice, you know, is, is fine with me. Um, so we're excited about the opportunity to, to hit the court tomorrow night. And, um, you know, it would be a great, great opportunity for, um, for these guys to show, you know, what type of team they are. Let's go to the second row. Parker Cotton with the Bozeman Daily Chronicle. Matt, if you could maybe just build on that last answer. Um, I know you've been at the first four before. Um, one, could you remind us when that was and what kind of um, unique challenges go into uh, preparing for, for this set of games? Yeah, so I, my, my first year in college coaching, uh, right after graduating from Lehigh in, in 2003, uh, we won the Patriot League Championship in 2004 and, and, and came here to play Florida A&M in the playing game. Uh, I believe that was the first year, maybe the second year that it, it had taken place. Um, I think the biggest challenge that I remember from that time is, is just the, the pace of the turnaround, you know, all the logistics, uh, not to mention the prep of, of, of the team and the game itself. Um, but fortunately for us, you know, when you come in uh, and you're hired, you know, when we were hired as a staff, drinking from a fire hose is, is, feels like a, you know, a water fountain to us. So uh, it, it's all good. Um, you know, we've, we've got a great staff that's been kind of dividing and conquering all the logistical pieces of it. Second row in the middle. Yeah, Austin Barr, SWX Montana. Um, coach, third year in a row, um, winning the big sky. You know, a lot of special players on this specific team. So, you know, what do you hope to, to show the nation with not only Montana State Bobcats, but these guys that you're doing it with, especially a guy like Brian Cracky? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think one, one of the reasons we were so excited to, to, to join uh, forces with Montana State were, were the championship uh, aspirations, the proof of concept that had been established by Coach Sprinkle and, and, um, and the staff before us. The foundation that was there from a cultural standpoint was very strong um, and, and fit, you know, a lot of the things that I believe as well. Um, so while our, our roster is a little bit different and we play a little bit different style, um, the fabric of, of Montana State basketball was something that we wanted to hold on to. Um, and, and that's what I would hope America would see tomorrow night is just um, kind of the chip on your shoulder, you know, blue collar mentality that this group has. Um, and, and I think, you know, we, we are in the, in the middle of, you know, a golden era of, of Montana State athletics and, and Bobcat basketball in particular. And, and um, I, I still believe the best is yet to come. And so these guys all committed. Um, to being a part of that next chapter. And you mentioned Brian Garaki, who, who, who came uh, you know, with, with me from Point Loma, um, to, to see a young man 
you know, not only turn down Division One opportunities out of high school, um, but then on, on the back end be able to accomplish, you know, those childhood dreams and, and being a part of March Madness is a, a real joy for me and uh, really special. Let's go to the fourth row in the back. Connor McDonough, UD Sports Media. Coach, congrats on winning your first year at the or postseason tournament first year at the new school. How do you look to um, continue this success in this unique NCAA landscape of transfer portal and NIL? Yeah, I mean, um, certainly, you know, we had to navigate that last spring, uh, bringing in, you know, eight new scholarship players. Um, the, the transfer portal is, uh, you know, one of those eras that, that giveth and, and taketh. Um, and so while we had a lot to, we had a lot to replace, uh, we were also able to find six young men um, that, that came here from, from other Division One situations that had yet to play their best basketball, that had a chip on their shoulder and were, were more concerned with who they were playing for than who they were playing with and, and trying to, you know, join forces or, or collaborate with uh, super teams and, and whatnot. Um, you know, obviously the NIL piece is, is new and, and uh, you know, changing rapidly, but there's still two things that, that are tried and true. And, and number one is player development. Um, and then the second part is team building. And that's not just roster building, it's team building. And, um, you know, I think we've always taken great pride in, in the basketball family that I'm a part of um, in, in player development and team building. And so once that process started in earnest in June, um, nothing was really different about our journey. Second row in the middle. Awesome par, SWX Montana. Um, just thought of this, we did a, a golf segment back, you know, when you first got hired. Um, and just to look back from that moment to all the way now, being in the first four, has there been like a, a pinch me moment or like a wow, like this just this amazing run? Like has, how amazing has it been for you? Uh, it's been incredible. Uh, if I remember correctly, we, we, we fought a little bit of weather that day. Um, I'm not sure if, if you noticed, but I, I did stick a water bottle up and catch lightning while we were on, on one of the holes. So uh, I just tried to tuck that away for March and, and, and make sure that we could, you know, release it here at the right time. Let's go back to the second row. Uh, Grace Lawrence, MTN Sports. Uh, a guy who does a lot of the little things, Eddie Turner. Can you just talk about, um, you know, his play to end that stretch, especially in Boise, the way he distributes the ball with John, what he's meant to you being one of those players that came in uh, this offseason? Yeah, Eddie's been, uh, been, been phenomenal, especially as of late. You know, you're talking about a young man who played 19 games, I believe, uh, over four years at Columbia due to a combination of injuries and, and illness and family circumstance. And so, um, you know, it, it really, for him, was, was about getting through an entire season and learning the, the lessons that come with that and getting comfortable out there on the floor. Um, he's got tremendous speed with the basketball. He's really allowed us to play, um, you know, a, a, a fast-flowing style uh, and along with Rob. Uh, those two guys have, have provided the veteran leadership in the backcourt that we had hoped, you know, to, to, to attain uh, when, we, when we built the roster. And, and so um, for him, you know, he, he, he's just continuing to get better and better uh, with the more game experience that he gets. And, and uh, he's such a coachable, bright young man. Um, it, you know, again, his, his best basketball is in front of him too. Jump online uh, via Zoom. Coulter, your question for Coach. Hey, Coulter Nuana, Skyline Sports. You mentioned just playing as many times in a row as you can to sort of harness this momentum. How do you continue to do that, and does that make this short turnaround a little bit easier? Yeah, I mean, I think once once we got um, to the last week of the regular season, uh, we've been in, in game prep, game mode, you know, almost for 20 days in a row now. We had three games in five days to, to finish the regular season and then went to Boise. Uh, to play three games in three days. And so, uh, again, that, that creates a process that we're comfortable in. Uh, our guys have done a really good job as the year has gone on at uh, learning how to prepare quickly. And, and um, you know, early in the year, we were a team that would play really well on Thursdays when we had two to three days to prepare. And then uh, on Saturday, with a quick turn, uh, we, we left some things to be desired a little bit. And, and those lessons uh, have really, you know, helped our, our team grow and, and learn how to, you know, get prepared in, in short order. We'll go to the second row. Parker Cotton with the Bozeman Daily Chronicle. Um, Matt Grambling's coach, uh, Dante Jackson, was in here not too long ago, and he 
joked that his team's difficult schedule this year was kind of born out of nobody wanting to play them after you know, the success that they had two seasons ago. Um, I'm curious if in your position you experienced any bit of that coming in and maybe how much you expect to experience it this summer. And then also, also if, um, if you had any interaction with Coach Jackson and just what that has been like over these you know, two days that you've been here. Yeah, I had a had a chance to meet Coach Jackson yesterday, uh, kind of in between uh, practice practice times. Um, he's he's obviously had a, a great run uh, these last seven years at Grambling and and, and building a program um, that is highly respectable. And and as we all know, um, you know at the mid major level, um, the, the more success you have, the harder it is to schedule. Um, you know, we had a lot of the schedule in place when I got there. Um, and, and then we had, you know, a, a number of folks that wanted to take advantage of that coaching transition and, and, and signed up rather quickly. Um, you know, we'll see how that goes moving forward. But uh, ultimately, you know, you're trying to put a schedule together that's going to prepare you to win your conference tournament, your conference championship. And um, that can take on a lot of forms, you know, throughout, throughout the, the, the season. Colter, another question for Coach? Yep. Uh, last one for me, Coach. You talk about your influences a lot, particularly your grandfather, and I'm sure you thought about him a lot since he cut down the nets in Boise. Uh, but could you just talk about that and, and just his influence on you getting to this point uh, in your career? Yeah, um, you know, my, my grandpa, uh, Ed Peppel, was a high school basketball coach in the Seattle area for 49 years. Uh, spent 42 years of that 49 in, in one community. And um, I grew up in that basketball family. Uh, watching his teams uh, like my son and daughter are, you know, these days, um, and going on those journeys with them, um, and then ultimately had a chance to play for him um, in high school. And, you know, that's why I coach, um, I, the, to pay that forward. Um, the lessons that I learned, the relationships that um, were born, you know, from those experiences are, are what make me who I am today. And it's it's been our guiding light as a basketball family for um, our, our vision for, for this program. And, for what can be accomplished when when you're a part of something that's bigger than yourself, and so uh, you know, while he's not with us today in person, I, I know that he's with me. Um, definitely felt his his heart and spirit uh, in Boise last week, and um, it's it's been really special to um, be able to, to to pay a lot of those lessons forward. Second row. Lawrence MTN Sports just building off of that coach being from a basketball family your son sits at the end of the bench for all the games um, he is such a character I think we all like interacting with him um, but what was it like sharing last week uh, with him especially because like you said you've been on the flip side of that what's it like sharing that moment um, it's full circle um, you know the the life lessons you learn from this game and being a part of a team uh, I don't know that you can have a better platform as a father than that. And so um, that's what I've been familiar with and what I've seen, you know, work well and, and been able to, um, again, pay that forward and try to pass that torch on to, to Luke and Addie. Um, so being able to share those moments is uh, very joyous. Um, I'll never forget, you know, turning around on, on Wednesday night and, and, and seeing Addison um, just waiting to hug me with tears running down her eyes. Um, you know, th those are really special memories because you can't do this job without your family supporting you. Um, it just takes too much of yourself um, from a leadership perspective and, and putting yourself out there. Uh, time management, obviously, is a huge component of that and the schedules that we keep. And so um, they're a part of this journey. They're a part of this story just as much as you know, any one of these players. Coach, uh, we look forward to more memories tomorrow night. Uh, best of luck. Congratulations on a terrific season. Really excited to see the Bobcats for Wednesday. Thanks a lot. Go Cats.
What's up, Jeff? Good. Thanks, Jim. For those here in the press area, we ask that you please silence your cell phones 
as we talk to student athletes and coaches. Also, for questions, uh, just provide your name and your affiliation, your media affiliation, before asking each question. And then uh, if you're j joining us via Zoom, uh, just use the hand feature, and uh, we'll see it, and you can uh, ask your question. And then finally, recording press conferences on cell phones uh, or cameras is prohibited. Uh, we thank you for your cooperation. At this time, we'd like to welcome the Colorado Buffaloes, 24 and 10, uh, 13 and 7 in the Pac-12, uh, finishing third in the conference, uh, falling in the championship game against Oregon. Uh, in the middle, uh, Javon Hadley. Um, next to him, uh, KJ Simpson, first team Pac-12, Pac all tournament team. Tristan De Silva, second team all conference. Uh, was also named to that all tournament squad. Uh, gentlemen, before questions, uh, we'll start with uh, Tristan, just your excitement of being in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, I mean, it's great. Uh, that's that's what it's all about, making it to this tournament. Um, obviously, experiencing my freshman year, it was a little bit different uh, just because of COVID, but um, really excited to be here with this squad. I uh, really love this team. Javon, your excitement. Uh, yeah, I'm beyond excited. Um, I'm also extremely grateful. Um, without the man above, I wouldn't be here, and uh, many of us wouldn't be here. So I'm extremely grateful and excited for this experience. KJ. Yeah, I mean, same here. I mean, uh, who doesn't love, you know, continuing to play basketball during, you know, March? Uh, obviously, give thanks to, you know, everybody who put me and my teammates in this position, you know, all the people that, you know, in, in this program that have supported us and just excited to play. Questions for our student athletes? On both offense and defense, you know, you're hard, hard to beat. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, same thing. Uh, ultimately, trusting each other, uh, playing with our principles, uh, knowing what we're looking for on offense and on defense, um, and then just going out and competing. Another question, second row. I'm sure you guys are aware that obviously uh, Coach Rice and, and Tad are good friends. Uh, you know, when the selection came out, Coach Rice said, hey, I've already watched every one of their games because I watched them all, you know, live rooting for Tad. Uh, I assume it goes the other way, too. How would that help with the prep, uh, the coaching staff's familiarity, as you think? Tristan? Yeah, I mean, it's it's good, I guess. I mean, they're, they're, uh, they're the ones preparing the scouts. So, um, you know, obviously them being, being tight uh, helps because they, they've watched all the games. Um, they know their play style, um, and uh, we've already talked about it. We've already went through scouting reports, so um, they give us a good feel about how Bo how Boise is going to try to play against us. Javon? Yeah, I think just uh, with our coaching staff being familiar, um, it obviously helps, and it, um, it helps relieve a lot of uh, stress, um, stress on the coaching staff for sure, because um, in March, you know, with quick turnarounds, um, you're playing a lot of different teams, uh, a lot of different scouting reports, so it definitely helps relieve a lot of stress for them. KJ. Yeah, and I think another thing to add to that as well, then add on to what these guys said, is that uh, we actually played them last year, and uh, we had a complete, we had a different team. They had a different team, great, great players, but kind of similar, or some players have stayed as well. So we understand kind of the personnel on each other's teams, and uh, like coaches being best friends, like what Javon said, it, it eases it a lot, e um, a lot easier and slower. You know. You don't have to stretch as much because, you know, like in March you play against teams you're not really familiar about. But since the coaches are familiar, then it just makes it a lot easy or easier in the transition a lot smoother. Let's go to the fourth row, uh, far side. J. Tess, KTVB. Uh, Tristan, uh, curious your thoughts on Tyson Dagenart, his game and the su success he's had since he arrived at Boise State. Yeah, I've been, I've been catching up uh, over the past weeks uh, just because, you know, we played them last year trying to – you know, look how people are doing in the in the conference, uh, and obviously them playing in the Mountain West, played against a couple of uh, of our guys, um, and um, yeah, I mean he's he's developed uh, pretty good. Um, you know, he's a solid player, fundamentally sound, uh, can score at all three levels. So so I'm excited to go up against him. Fourth row in the back, Jacob Toby with Nine News Denver. KJ, uh, towards the end of the year, coach was really upset that a lot not a lot of people were talking about you nationally. Quote, it pissed him off. Um, 
how excited are you just to be here on a national stage and, and show the country that, you know, you're, you're, you're being worthy of, of, you know, an all-American type guy? And, and also for you, Javon and Tristan, like, do you kind of echo that same sentiment that Coach had about, you know, KJ should be more talked about? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm really excited, you know, to, you know, show the world to represent who I am. You know, I have to back up what Coach says. Um, but, yeah, it's just – that's just been kind of the story of my life. You know, I've just been a kind of an underdog in a sense. You know, uh, didn't do the traditional route of going to the big name schools, um, not, you know, leaving or jumping ship when things got hard. You know, I'm real big on loyalty. So just growing up, I've just, that's who I am. That's who I've had to embody and um, being. And so, you know, I just know that as long as I put in the work, as long as I put in the effort and, you know, I have, playing with great guys up here like this and the support from my teammates and coaches that have family, friends. Um, you know, everything will all pay off in the end, but I'm really excited to kind of showcase, you know, myself. I know we all are excited to showcase ourselves, you know, in this tournament. Fifth row in the back corner there. Bob Beeler from the Bronco Radio Network. This is for any of you guys. What, what do you think you guys do best? What's the strength of your team? And then second part of the question, what do you see in Boise State as maybe the greatest challenge in playing them? KJ? I think uh, within us, I think uh, we're at our best when we're running in transition. Obviously, you know, we're used to playing at altitude, so um, real well conditioned. We're, we love trying to get it out in transition. Uh, defenses and rebounding has, has been our identity or what we've prioritized as a team and as within the coaching staff. So that's uh, something that we embody within ourselves. And then in terms of Boise State, we understand that it's not going to be an easy game. They're a hard fought nose team. And, uh, you know, the Mountain West is a tough conference. You know, we had to go up against Colorado State and, um, you know, been watching film on them um, and the games that Boise's been playing. And, you know, there's a lot of good teams in that conference. And so, we just understand going in that it's not going to be easy. I mean, all these games are not going to be easy. All the teams are good at, around this time. And uh, but we know by if we uh, just stick it out possession by possession and uh, just st play Colorado basketball, that we'll be fine. Javon, I would say yeah. Um, in terms of ourselves, um, again, just sharing the ball, um, especially in March. Um, you can't get here without guarding. Um, both individually and as a team. Um, Boise State's a good uh, a team defense. And um, so we just got to share the ball, move the ball, and, you know, get them moving. And, um, you know, that's something that we've done really well and we've had a lot of success. Um, it's shown. And um, so we just got to keep doing that. And in terms of Boise State, um, just winning the um, so-called uh, war on the boards. Um, you know, um, we're going to say when the game starts, when the, um, the shot goes up, uh, boxing out, um, finishing possessions, rebounding, and um, just being physical. It's going to be a physical game. We understand that. I'm pretty sure Boise State understands that, and so it's going to be a physical game for sure. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't have much to add. Uh, they they both pretty much summed it up. I think it's a, a toughness game at the end of the day. So that shows up in rebounding, uh, finishing plays, um, playing through contact, and um, yeah, that's what's going to come down to. Let's go back to the fourth row on the aisle. Just going back to that last thing I asked, KJ, for Javon and Tristan, like, do you kind of feel that same way that Tab was feeling about his play and how he should be kind of more talked about and how this is a big stage for him to show what he can do? Javon? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, not only because he's my, uh, one of my guys, um, just because, um, you know, his play, his play style, um, his numbers, you know, everything points in the right direction that, um, you know, it's on a national level. Um, so, you know, he should have been getting that, um, those national looks. And, um, you know, there's a lot of questions, you know, why? Well, you know, why hasn't he? But um, I know it's a perfect opportunity for, you know, not only him, but um, like KJ said, the rest of us as well. Um, you know, we, we wouldn't get here if we weren't a good, solid team and we didn't have a lot of good, solid players. Um, obviously, we have a um, good uh, so-called head of the snake, KJ, um, Tristan, Eddie, you know, a lot of veteran group. So um, we have a lot of guys that are excited to, you know, showcase our talents as well. Tristan. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm happy for him. Uh, he's been playing phenomenal. So, um, you know, getting on that stage and, and getting to compete against the best, um, that's that's what he's supposed to do. So, um, but as Javon said, you know, everybody on this team, um, I'm happy for to be, you know, in, in this position and, and playing against a, a good team on the national level. Follow-up question? And then for all three of you guys, you guys started like the, the buff chain and the defensive player of the game chain. 
Um, what kind of momentum has that brought for, for team chemistry, and, and what would it mean for you guys to, to get one of those chains in a win here in Dayton, whether it be the buff chain or the defensive player chain, all three of you guys? Tristan. Yeah, I mean, it, you just get like the credit at the end of the game, basically, or the next day. Um, it's, it's like a funny way to, to kind of shout people out um, after their performance. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a funny thing to do. Um, you know, we're, we're happy for guys that haven't gotten the chain yet. They, they get the chain or they come off the bench, they get the chain um, and they impact the game in, in, in a different way. Um, so that's a fun little thing. Javon on the chain. Yeah, um, it's definitely a fun, fun thing that we do. But um, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, it'd be it'd be really cool be, um, to you know have the opportunity to get those chains because you know we only do it when we win. So you know, um, you know, after we get this W, um, yeah, it would be cool for you know anybody on our team to um, get the chain. Um, you know, we're not gonna um, you know we're not the type of team to be like uh, you know he should have got it or he should have got that chain. So you know, we're just we're just grateful when you know when we have the opportunity to get those chains. KJ. Yeah, I think, um, like, every, like they said, it's a funny way, but um, at the same time, it's real competitive within the team, you know, and that's something that you, you want. You want guys competing and, you know, trying to, trying to get a defensive chain, you know, and uh, in a sense, um, we don't really, that's not really what we look for, you know, that's not our priority is, oh, I have to play defense so I can get the chain. Uh, it's just, like we said, it's a funny way of, you know, giving credit to, you know, the guy that stepped up and played great defense or guy who was the buff of the game in a sense, you know, for that game. And But we do compete within ourselves and within each other. And um, it's just it's a good way to kind of keep everybody, you know, connected. Let's go to the fourth row. Uh, KJ, a couple for you. Uh, first one being, um, you know, Boise State's certainly grateful to be back in the NCAA tournament for a third straight year, but their initial reaction was shocked that they got a spot in the in the first four. Uh, what was your team's reaction when they heard the news that you would be coming to Dayton? Because it's it is an awfully quick turnaround. Yeah, I think um, I think our, our we were really excited. We were really excited, but uh, I know me personally, I I was kind of stuck in the moment. You know, the, this is my first time. You know, being announced into March March Madness and seeing Colorado pop up. I was like, oh wow, like. You know, I understand it's the first four, but we still made it. We still made it. And there's a bunch of teams, really good teams out there that didn't make it. And uh, so I think within the room, uh, everybody was really excited, you know, just to keep on playing basketball and uh, keep this season going. Uh, and then I, I know you don't necessarily be matched up with them, but um, Tyson Dagenhart, you know, he's done something that's never been done in Boise State history, and he's brought this team to three straight NCAA tournaments. What, what are your thoughts on Tyson, his play, and his impact overall for his team? Yeah, I mean, uh, he's he's a heck of a player. I mean, I remember playing against him last year um, at the Myrtle Beach tournament and how much, you know, the coaches stressed on him within the scouting report and, you know, going against him and seeing, you know, his talent and, you know, his leadership out there and following that team along the year last year and then understanding what they've been doing this year. I mean, it's special, you know. You have a guy like that uh, who goes out there and plays hard for his team and it's uh, nothing but respect for him and, you know, uh, can't wait to go up against him. Fifth row in the back. Uh, Mark Johnson, the uh, Colorado Basketball Network. Guys, for you, um, if you're a younger team, this can be overwhelming getting to the tournament. You guys are veterans. You guys have played all kinds of basketball uh, over the years. Is there a sense going into this, your, your confidence, just going and kind of let it all hang out this uh, next few days? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, um, you know, I'll, I know – I have never been to March Madness, but at the same time, you know, I have the experience of playing at, you know, a high level and uh, playing against high level teams. And I know everybody on this team or most of the guys on this team, you know, have that same experience. And uh, I think at this stage, you just have to take the approach of, you know, it's just you just got to go out there and play. You can't you can't rise to the level of expectation. You have to fall back on your principles, fall back on what you've been uh, doing in practice, you know, do the things that that got you here and to this point. Obviously, you know, um, higher level you go, you know, you're gonna need guys to step up, you're gonna need guys to, you know, um, play great minutes. But uh, I have every confidence and trust within my teammates that we'll be able to do that, if, even if it's March Madness or any other game. Javon, you wanna chime in on that? 
Yeah, um, I would say that, yeah, I'm pretty comfortable. Um, I know that a lot of, again, we have a veteran group. I know that um, we're pretty comfortable. Um, I know that we know that we should be here. Um, you know, we've earned this, we've worked for this, um, you know, both, both individually and as a team. Uh, I know for myself, I've, you know, been through a, a, a different path than other people. You know, I went to junior college and, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, I know that my work, um, you know, I deserve to be here and, you know, I'm comfortable being here. And I know the guys are in the same boat. Um, you know, we've worked for this, so you know we're gonna um, we're gonna go into the game comfortable and you know ready to go. Interesting. Yeah, uh, as as Javon said, I think we're here for a reason. So um, if we just keep trusting each other, keep playing together, uh, keep playing the way that we know that we know we're capable of, we're gonna be all right. <clears throat> Fourth row, uh, Javon. For you, um, it stands out to be at uh, <coughs> excuse me, Ch Chibuzo Abo's game and. Um, he's obviously a bit of a shooter, probably a little bit of an underrated defender at times, but uh, what, what stands out about Abo's game to you for Boise State? Um, I would just say um, the biggest thing that, you know, we've talked about is just his effort, um, his ability to, you know, rebound the ball and, you know, just do a little bit of everything. Um, you know, when you have guys like that, um, you know, they're, they're a tough guard. Um, so that's, that's definitely one of the, um, you know, uh, key points of the game. So, you know, we have to lock in and uh, just do what we do. To you, um, Max Rice uh, for Boise State. He's he's been here multiple times as a as a kid, basically. Um, he what what about his game stands out to you? And uh, obviously, he can shoot, but he just does a lot of instinctual things for this team at times. But what what about Max Rice stands out to you? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think just the biggest thing, obviously, yeah, he can shoot. He can shoot, and he has the ultimate green light to shoot, and uh, he will pull it from anywhere. Um, but he's also he has a high IQ and he does really really smart things. You can just see it in watching film. You know he kind of makes the right play at right times and um, you know he's just a great player. Obviously I remember him from going against him last year and uh, seeing the improvement he's made and you know the success of the team. Um, it's been it's been kind of cool to watch and so I have nothing but respect for him. Obviously I have to stay attached because he will let it fly. So but yeah uh, just watching film and getting prepared for that matchup. KJ, Tristan, uh, Javon, congratulations on a fantastic season. We, we really look forward to watching it continue tomorrow night uh, with your matchup against Boise State. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you very it. very much. Appreciate Thank you guys. You. Just a reminder, we ask that you silence your cell phones. And then uh, those individuals asking questions, if you could just state your name and your media affiliation for every question that you ask, we greatly appreciate that. At this time, we're really excited to welcome Tad Boyle, the head coach of the Colorado Buffaloes. Again, his team 24-10, and 13-7 and 7 out of the Pac-12. Coach, before we open the floor to questions, uh, your excitement on on being back in the NCAA tournament and uh, what your team's been able to accomplish this season. Thank you, uh, Alex. Appreciate it. Uh, we're excited to be here, obviously. I mean, to, to get to this tournament, to get to this stage is, uh, is a process for every team. And uh, every team has its uh, ups and downs throughout the season. We've had a lot of them. Uh, a lot of ours had to do with injury. And uh, for us to overcome the things we've overcome throughout the year, 
Um, and injuries are part of the game. We all know that. But uh, uh, for these guys to persevere, and I, you know, I, was, I, I feel like we've been in a one-game elimination tournament for about four weeks now. You know, from that L.A. trip when we, we lost to UCLA, a heartbreaker, uh, one possession game down the stretch, and then found a way to beat USC in double overtime, being down 16. And, and you know, as you look in the rearview mirror, you know, that was a turning point of our season without a doubt. But we didn't know that at the time. We just had to try to win the next game and win the next game. And, and that's what we did and, and got on a roll. And we didn't quite finish it off in Las Vegas, unfortunately. Oregon, Oregon got us in the finals. But, you know, with four minutes to go, that was a tie game and, and, and came down to the end. So our guys have been battling and competing, uh, playing at a high level here the last uh, month of the season. And we're, we're excited to be in Dayton. Questions for Coach? We will start on the fourth row at the end. Uh, Jay Tuss, K2B, Boise, Idaho. Uh, Coach, um, what was your first reaction when you saw Boise State pop up next to Colorado, knowing that you would have to go up against, uh, you know, one of your best friends in Leon Rice? Well, it flashed up together. You know, it wasn't like Boise State came up and then Colorado. It was just like they both came up. So obviously, my eyes went straight to Colorado and. And I, I was elated and excited because and, I was nervous. I, I didn't know, you know, with, with, with all those upsets in the conference tournament, North Carolina State beat North Carolina and Oregon beating us. Not that it was a big upset, but, you know, it was a bid-stealing uh, win. And, and I was excited to be in because I was nervous that we might not be. And then when I saw Boise next to our name, uh, I was like, oh, gosh, are you kidding me? <laughs> like. Uh, that's, I don't want to be playing against Leon. I've watched his team a lot this year, which I guess is a good thing. But but uh, he is one of my best friends in this business, without a doubt, and uh, uh, got a lot of respect for him and her, uh, their program. Follow up question. So to follow that up, what do you think of the job that Leon Rice has done in about the time that you've been at, at Colorado yeah. as well? And then uh, probably a dangerous question to ask. I don't want to steal everybody's time, but your your best Leon Rice story maybe. <laughs> Well, let me just say this. Most of my Leon Rice stories are not fit for public, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> consumption. <laughs> but I've had, we've had some great times together, without a doubt, without a doubt. I forget your first part of the question. Uh, the job he's done. Oh, the job he's done. He's done, um, we got the job the same year. You know, it's my 14th year at Colorado. It's his 14th year at Boise. So we kind of came in together. We've, we've commiserated, we've celebrated together. Obviously, we coached the last two summers. Uh, with USA basketball together and had some some great times there as well so you know and I look at what he's done at Boise and I know how hard of a job it is from 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 the outside you know Boise is a great community as you know and it's a great uh, uh, great sports town but it's so isolated and you know to get kids to come there and and to recruit at the level he's recruited and to win consistently you know year in and year out uh, in, in a really good league like the Mountain West who values basketball, I can't say enough about the job he's done. I mean, he's, he's, uh, he's a terrific coach and he's a terrific program builder. And, and that's something I think we share a lot in common. We talk a lot about culture, about building the, the right way and getting the right kids that fit, you know, whether it's Boise, Idaho or Boulder, Colorado. And, and he's certainly done that. And I, I think we have too. Let's go to the second row. Worcester, Idaho Press. Tad, what's it been, you know, about your relationship with Leon that it's been able to last 30 years for so long? Well, I think it's, you know, just our approach to life. You know, he's a family guy. I'm a family guy. Um, you know, I know his kids. He, he knows my kids. I mean, it's just uh, when I was a high school coach in Colorado at Longmont High School back in the early 90s, he was an assistant coach at the University of Northern Colorado in Greeley, which is my hometown. So our mutual friend, Mark Turgeon, who I played with at Kansas, introduced us, said, you got to get to know this guy. And so we, we struck up a relationship then, and, and, uh, and it's been, been there ever since. So um, it's just grown, grown and developed through the years. And I think it's just a, a mutual respect, a mutual admiration, and, and the fact that, you know, we've got both – he's got a great sense of humor. He's a fun guy to be around. I mean, if you know Leon, you, you love him. You know, my next question was going to be, what's your first uh, – chance meeting him when he was recruiting one of your players, but I guess you answered that. Uh, so just going against him, I know you did, you got to play against him last year, you know, yeah. but now doing it at such a big stage, you know, what's, what's that emotions like? Yeah, it's, look, when that ball tips up tomorrow, it's not, it's not about our relationship or friendship. It's about trying to win a game. They're going to try to win. We're going to try to win, just like we did last year in Myrtle Beach, and they got us last year. They were the tougher team. 
they physically manhandled us and out executed us and, and and really when you get to this stage you get in these games it's about your players it's about what they do on the floor how how hard they play how tough they play and to me when you get ready to play Boise State you better put your hard hat on because they they're tough they rebound well they're physical they're good basketball players and they run good stuff offensively and they're tough defensively so we're gonna have to execute on the offensive end we're gonna have to battle on the boards and and we're gonna have to make plays Let's go to the other side of the aisle, uh, second row. Uh, Jeff Gilbert, Dayton Daily News. Coach, because you guys know each other so well, you played last year, it's like, what's the temptation, you think, for yourself to try different things, or are you just going to be who you are in this game? Yeah, I think you get to this, this point of the season. Look, you, you don't get here if you haven't had success, right? And so you, you stay with what you, you do, and I think – I'm sure he's looking at our team thinking we need to attack this or attack that. We're looking at his team, you know, to look at their strengths, look at their weaknesses. So you might tweak some things here and there, but it's more personnel based, I would say. You know, a lot of the actions, you know, that people run, you've seen them before. Uh, you, don't, uh, you don't run into a team unless somebody's running, you know, the Princeton offense or something maybe that you haven't seen in your league or a style that you haven't seen, uh, which, which can happen in this tournament for sure. But, I think Boise, we, we, we've seen a lot of the stuff that they've run, and, and uh, they've seen a lot of stuff that we've run. So we just have to do what we do, and we have to do it better than they do it. Come back to the second row on the aisle. Uh, BJ Rands with uh, Bronco Nation News. Uh, Ted, Leon said right after the selection show, well, I've already watched all their games this year live, so <laughs> it'll make the scouting a little easier. Uh, from that standpoint, kind of following up what you just said there, how, how uh, nice is that on a short turnaround to have the familiarity you did with, with their roster? And, and what does concern you the most about their team? Well, a um, couple things. It has, you know, what the head coach knows has no meaning or bearing. <laughs> it's what do your players know? How, how do you get that information from what you've seen you know, all year? Because he's watched us, I've watched him. But their players have to understand because they're the ones on the floor executing it. And you know, when I look at Boise, I look at a guy like Dagenhart, who's you know, six foot eight, can, can shoot the three. He's 240 pounds. He can score on the block. Um, he's a good player. He's got good shot fakes. He's crafty. Max Rice has got deep, deep range and the ultimate green light. Um, he is the coach's son, right? Um, I don't think he's coming out for any quick or some bad shots. So he, well, you got to guard him from, from beyond the three-point line. So, you know, you see their personnel. You see Ogbo, who's a heck of a, a big wing, who's got good size, who can post up, and he can shoot threes. And then and then Stanley, who's been a great addition to their team, you know, very active and uh, athletic. So, and then they got Anderson at the point. So they've, they've got good players. There's no doubt about it. So a lot of things scare me about Boise, but to me, uh, they, they can hurt you from a lot of different positions. Follow-up question? And you touched it on your, in your intro just about getting healthy and stuff, but what has been the, the, the biggest key, you think, to losing one game in the last month or whatever and why you guys are playing so well? I think right there's, there's two things from, from that standpoint for us, those, those of you who have not watched us. We've gotten better defensively. Uh, now, that didn't show very much against Oregon in a championship game down the stretch for sure. In the second half, I think we got eight stops in 27 possessions. So that left us, you know, that half, and that's, that's what cost us the game. But we've gotten better defensively over the last month, and we've, we've done a better job taking care of the basketball. Again, didn't do it against Oregon uh, in that championship game. They scored 23 points off our turnovers. We scored zero off theirs, and we lose a seven-point game. So, uh, but we got to take good care of the basketball. It's going to be the case against Boise, because if they turn you over, they'll run. Uh, and they're, they're very sound defensively. But we take care of the ball, and we guard them. Uh, as long as we play Colorado basketball on the offensive end, you know, we'll, we'll be in good shape. But uh, we can't turn it over, and we've got to guard the heck out of those guys. A fifth row in the back. Bob Beeler from the Bronco Radio Network. You talked about Degenhardt, who's first team all Mountain West. You've got a first team all Pac-12 or in K.J. Simpson. So give us a scouting report on what makes him special. KJ, you know, has had uh, uh, an All-American type year. You look at his numbers, you look at his consistency, you look at his efficiency. He does everything for us. He scores the ball, he distributes the ball, he rebounds the ball, he guards the ball. I mean, he is a he is a legitimate, in my my opinion, a legitimate All-American candidate that doesn't get enough national attention. And guess what? Now he's on a national stage. Now he doesn't need to do anything 
outside of who he is. He just needs to play his game. But uh, we've got good players in our team, just like Boise's got good players in their team. But Dagenhart uh, is, to me, the key to their team. And then, you know, getting out and uh, guarding the three-point line with Max and, 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 uh, and Ogbo, those, those, those guys we got to – really take away and we can't forget about Stanley you can't forget about Anderson you can't forget about their guys coming off the bench but uh, you got to know Degan Hart is kind of the head of their snake so to speak a fourth row Jacob Jacob Toby 90s Denver it's up Ted um, what is it about the tournament that can elevate the status of somebody right you've been very vocal about KJ all year long especially yep. towards the end um, so what was it? What is it about the tournament, and how excited are you for people to now see what you're preaching? What you've been well, doing? I mean, number one, he just has to be who he is, Jacob. He, I, that's what I've told our team. Like KJ doesn't need to come out and be somebody that he's not. He just needs to be the KJ Simpson that he's been all year. And you know, the difference is the stage. This difference is the media. The difference is the the lights, the attention, the, um, and and all eyes are on this tournament for the next three weeks. And so. When you have that and you just perform the way he's been performing, that's all he has to do. He doesn't do, have, to, have to do anything special. And if he does that, people will see how special a player he is. We'll stay with that same mic. First row on the end. Coach Scott Proctor, Colorado. Good to see you again. Two, you guys and Boise State, two really good rebounding teams. Yeah. How much is that going to determine kind of this game and how much is that an emphasis to you to, you know, crash the boards on both ends? Key. Absolute key, because to me, when you talk about toughness in basketball, you, 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 you talk about the turnovers, being able to take care of the ball and not turn that thing over, being mentally tough, strong with the ball, because they rake at you when you drive it. They're going to be in the gaps when you drive it. you got to make good plays. And then the rebounding battle. You, you look at those two areas, and that will tell you how tough your team played. And, uh, and I'm sure they're talking about it too. You know, they're, they're, uh, again, you look at Stanley, you look at Dagenhart, you look at Ogbo, on the offensive glass, those guys go and they're physical. So we got to we got to create space with our box outs. So good. The good news is, you know, we just played uh, an Oregon team that that played physical against us. Washington State in the semis played physical. Um, so we've played against physicality before, um, and they have too. But but it'll be a big part of the game tomorrow. Follow up question. Yeah, just a follow up. Um, you guys are 19 and five this season when Eddie grabs at least six rebounds. Yeah. Five and four when he doesn't. So basically a toss-up game when he doesn't. Is, is there something to that? And what do you kind of make of that? Yeah, I think I think if you look at, at Eddie um, and when he is what I call dialed in or locked in, um, both defensively and offensively, because he can he can be a problem for other teams uh, on, on, on the glass, certainly uh, on the block. And he's a great passer. You know, they bring him Cam Martin off off of their bench, who's their second second leading assist guy. We bring in it. Eddie starts for us, but he's a really good pass first big. And uh, when he when he puts his mind to it, and he's he's emotionally involved and 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 uh, locked in, he's a difference maker. Without it, and he's a problem for other teams. So he's gonna he's gonna create double teams. It's. How well can we play out of those double teams? Because it's hard to score over two guys. So we're going to have to kick it out, and we're going to have to get the ball moved, and we're going to have to attack closeouts and, and make plays. If we do that well, we'll be OK. If we don't, we'll be in trouble. Fourth row. Uh, I wanted to ask you about two players. I'm going to begin with Max Rice, though. You've known Leon forever, which means you've probably known Max for a while. What was the first time where you thought, like, ah, maybe this kid uh, you know, has something special in him, and then just his growth and development over his last, you know, six years at Boise State. Yeah, has it been six or eight? I can't remember. Um, but no, you know, I, I've known Max for a long time, and uh, I kind of seen him grow up from afar. Certainly not day to day, but um, you know, he's he's always been in a gym. You know, I remember talking to Leon. It's like you know, he's he's just been a gym rat. You know, going down even when he was in, you know. 10, 11, 12 years old, he's been a, a gym rat. So you knew he's got a chance because he's always been a really good shooter. And then, you know, early in his career, he had to adjust to college basketball and the, and the speed and the physicality of it. But he's, you know, he's a big, strong 6'5", 200, probably 205. I don't know what his weight is now, but he's a big, strong guard that can handle physicality and he can make shots. He's got deep, deep range. And so to see his development, he's become a, a better defender. And uh, so to see his development, you know, over his college career has been 
has been uh, pretty neat to watch, and, and he's a he's a legit he's a legit uh, threat now. And just a reminder, if you could please provide your name and affiliation before a question, we greatly appreciate it. And then let's go to the fifth row in the back. Mark Johnson, the Colorado Basketball Network. Ted, you've talked about your team being a high IQ basketball team. I'm wondering about the importance of that quality being in a tournament where you find out and literally hours later you're playing a college basketball game against somebody you haven't seen. Yeah, it's, it's hard. Again, uh, Mark, uh, I know Boise State uh, and their personnel. I think Coach Greer on our team who has the scout, he knows them. But it's, it's being able to translate that knowledge in a real – quick turnaround to your players. And then they've got to be able to absorb it, understand it, and then go out and execute against it. So it's, I think, critically important to have a high IQ team, to have a team that can digest. Because, you know, you get in this tournament, you got one day prep um, between games. And then, you know, if you're, you know, you're able to get out of that first weekend, now you got a little bit more time for the next game. But, you know, as this thing rolls, Preparation becomes more and more important, and understanding your opponent and what their strengths and what their weaknesses are. If we if we don't understand that Tyson Degenhart uses shot fakes, you know, and uses his body to create angles, we're going to have problems. If we understand that and we stay down on those shot fakes and we make him score over our length and and be rock solid, you know, we'll we'll, we'll take our chances. But you got to you got to play smart as well as playing hard. And, and playing smart is part of execution. And I think we've got a team, I think, that can do that. We'll see if we do or not. I think, I think we can. We've shown that we can. We just got to go out and do it. Coach, we really appreciate your time, and, and we're looking forward to watching you go up against Boise State tomorrow night. Thank you.
As folks are coming in and taking a seat, we do ask that you please silence your cell phone. Also, uh, asking a question, uh, please state your name and your media affiliation uh, before asking every question. And uh, those individuals on Zoom, you can use the hand feature, and uh, we'll make sure that you have a chance to ask your question to our student athletes and coaches. And then finally, recording the press conference on cell phones or cameras is prohibited. We thank you for your cooperation. At this time, we'd like to welcome the Boise State Broncos. 22-10, and 13-5, and five, finished third in the Mountain West Conference. They are one of six teams from the Mountain West to be in the NCAA tournament. And uh, really excited to have uh, up here on the stage, on the far end, Max Rice. Um, next to him, Tyson Dagenhart, first team all-conference. Uh, Chibuzo Abo, who uh, is uh, there in the middle. And then Omar Stanley, uh, closest to me, second team uh, Mountain West. Uh, before we ask questions, uh, Omar, I guess we'll start with you. Just your excitement of being here in the first four. Yeah, you know, it's definitely exciting. You know, uh, me personally, this is my first time, you know, playing a tournament where these guys have the experience. But for me, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's every kid's dream to play in March Madness. And so I'm definitely excited. And then the same question, uh, Chibuzo. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a huge stage. Uh, a lot of teams wanted to be here. So we're very grateful to be here and ready to compete. And Tyson? Uh, very, very excited to be here. Um, first time in school history to do it a three straight tournaments. So. Uh, hoping to get this first win for the for the program. And then finally, Max. Same. Questions for our student athletes. We'll start second row on the aisle. Uh, BJ Rands with Bronco Nation News. Uh, for Max and Tyson, you know, you guys have uh, been here twice before, and you got down early holes in both games, and you're kind of playing from behind. Uh, how important? I know it's an obvious question, but how important is a a good start tomorrow, and and maybe uh, trying to get off to a better start? Max. Yeah, well, considering you already got the Dayton fans against us, uh, it'll be important to get off to a great start. Um, and we're really looking forward to it. Uh, we know you can't get down early in this tournament, uh, so we just got to come out and play hard at the very start. Tyson. Uh, just to reiterate, Max said, you know, we dug ourselves in a 19-point hole against Memphis, and we played really well in the second half. We just couldn't, you know, dig ourselves out of it. So uh, really important to keep the game close and make sure you take an early lead. Third row on the end. I got two for Max, JTS KTVB. Max, what is it like to be back in Dayton, and what are your first memories of this place? Yeah, the last time I was here, it was a road game against Dayton, uh, and I just remember getting really loud. Um, it's a great arena. I know it's, uh, it's a good shooting gym, too. So uh, it's awesome to be back here. I know this town loves hoops, so uh, it's a great place to have the first four, and I'm, and I'm super excited to be here and, and get to participate in the NCAA tournament in a great city. You know Tad pretty well. Um, he was complimentary of your game, but uh, what, what is it like? Is it you know being a basketball family, growing up around the game, to you know have somebody that's so close to your dad going against you in such a meaningful tournament? Yeah, I mean uh, both coaches are very familiar with each other just because they coached together in USA this last couple summers. So. Uh, they know our system. We know theirs. We played them last year. Uh, we have a lot of respect for how he runs his program as well. So it'll be interesting competing against someone you know we grew up with and, and I uh, really look up to as a coach. Um, but it'll also be fun to, to just go out there and compete. Uh, and I think a lot of people are looking forward to this game. So Fifth row in the back. Bob Beeler, Bronco Radio Network. Uh, question really for anybody. Everybody talks about getting off to a better start this year. So. Kind of how do you go about doing that or some things you got to focus in on in the first, you know, three or four minutes to make sure you get off to a better start? Omar? Uh, you know, I think I think it's just it, we, we have to make our, own, make our own energy. You know what I mean? Like obviously, we're not going to be at home. And we, we, we've been able to make energy on the road with just our team. And I think I think this is just another test for us to do that. Shibuzo, you want to ch chime in on that? Uh, I think personally for me, um, in the past, I've tried to let my nerves settle. Um, and try to just like smooth my way into the game. But now I realize you kind of just got to go for it and go get some old boards uh, and rebound and things like that to really get yourself started. So I think that's going to be big for us. Third row on the aisle. Um, Omar, for you, uh, KTVB, J Tess, sorry. Um, you know, th these three guys have, have played in the NCAA tournament for Boise State. You haven't. What have they told you, you know, over these last couple of days? And um, I know you kind of touched on it off the top. How excited are you to, to partake in March Madness? Man, it's. It's 
it's electric. You know what I mean? Like that's that's just one of the words, but there there's really no words to put into it. Like how how amazing this is. You know, the opportunity for me to be here and for us to be here competing as a team. You know what I mean? We we've gone through a lot of adversity this year and a lot of disrespect, and I feel like you know I'm, I'm excited. You know to prove people wrong, and it's, this is a great place to do it, you know, playing, playing in Mars Madness, playing in Dayton. Uh, fifth row on the aisle. Mark Johnson, Colorado Basketball Network. Uh, for any of you Boise players, uh, just as you've watched tape on Colorado and you see what K.J. Simpson has become, I know you guys saw him last year, but he's grown, and, and as Tad Boyle has talked about, he's an All-American type candidate. Uh, just your, your kind of impressions of him as a player and the challenge of facing him uh, tomorrow. Tyson? Uh, he's a, he's an incredible player. Um, I think it's been first team both back to back years, and um, just puts a lot of pressure on your defense. Whether it's his passing, his scoring ability from three, from from the mid range, from at attacking the rim, so uh, he'll provide a great challenge for us defensively. Uh, Max, your thoughts on KJ? Yeah, just uh, from last year, I remember him being super quick. Like he he was super shifty. Him and Shaver kind of had a little battle there last year. Uh, and then you can't foul him because he's a great free throw shooter as well, and he's good at drawing fouls. So uh, just I think it'll be very difficult for us to keep him out of the box just because how quick he is. But uh, that's something that we're focused on, and, and hopefully we can try our best to, to contain him a little bit. Let's go to the second row. John, John Worcester, Idaho Press. Um, for all the players, uh, we saw your reaction Sunday after finding out where you guys were going. You know, Tyson talked about a little bit after, and, you know, Leon talked about, you know, yeah, it was a shock, but... You guys still have all your goals ahead of you. Just how long did it take for you to kind of compartmentalize that and, and realize that, you know, yeah, you still had something to play for? Omar? Yeah, obviously it, it was a quick turnaround. You know what I mean? Like we had to leave the next day after finding that out. Um, and so we, we really don't have time to kind of, you know, to kind of dwell on it to kind of, you know what I mean? Like, oh, we should have this, this, been in this situation. We should have been in, in whatever situation, you know. We're, we're all mature and we're all, we all understand that this is it's, it's bigger than, than what, you know, people are – Written, written out for us, and so um, we're, just, we're just ready to play. Shibuzo, you want to mention, talk about that? Yeah, kind of what Omar just said. We're just ready to play. I mean, um, we saw who we were, we saw who we were playing, and we we're shocked for a second. But I feel like right after that, our minds just flipped. All right, how are we gonna go get this dub? So uh, I think we're just ready to go. Follow up question? Yeah, um, and then just do you think that it adds a chip to your shoulder or a chip on your shoulder? Definitely. Definitely, like I said, um, you know, earlier, like we we've gone through a lot of a lot of adversity this year. You know, we faced a lot of a lot of disrespect, and so you know, we we, we always go into games with chips on our shoulder. You know, we had done it the whole year. Third row on the aisle. Jay Tess, KTVB. Uh, first for Max, then I'll Tyson to follow up here. But for, uh, Max, like every every day, I mean, you guys are fighting for tomorrow. You specifically, you you are the one of the guys up here without any eligibility left. Um, how how do I guess just how does that sit with you? How are you approaching that? Just staying alive at this point. It's survive and advance. It's do whatever you can to, to be able to play another game with these guys that I love. So uh, I don't want this to end yet. I'm not ready for it to end. So I'm going to go out there and play my absolute hardest no matter what. Uh, it doesn't matter who we're playing or, or what. It's just you got to survive. You got to advance. So and then Tyson, to, to follow that up, um, what has Max meant to this program? And, and uh, it's probably an obvious answer, but how hard are you going to fight to, you know, play another day with this guy? Uh, Max has meant a lot to this program. He's been a part of these, these three tournament teams, um, really led the program up to where it's at right now. And uh, we're just going to, you know, play our, play our tails off. You realize that, you know, we're only guaranteed one game in this tournament, and it's all about surviving and advancing. And so we're just going to, you know, play to that last whistle and give it our all. Question in the third row? Do you have a question? No. Other questions for our student athletes? Uh, let's go to the third row on the aisle here. Hi, uh, Patrick Sabusky, University of Dayton. Um, being a Mountain West team, a lot of people on this side of the country probably haven't seen you play. So what are you excited to show the country about Boise State basketball? Chibuzo? Um, I mean, for me, just our culture of unselfishness and how hard we play and how hard we play for each other. Um, everything we just worked on all year to come together as a team, um, but mostly just our toughness. I want to show that we're a really tough program, um, really have the will to win. Omar. Uh, yeah, you know, the Mountain West is really, really underrated. You know, I've said it all year long, um, but kind of to bounce off what Buzo said, kind of, you know, to, to show our toughness. I think we're a really, really tough conference and we're a really, really tough team. Um, and so we, we're excited to go out there and show that. Stay in the third row. 
Connor McDonough, UD Sports Media. Obviously, the Mountain West hasn't done significantly well in March lately, other than San Diego State. What do you want to prove to the nation that the Mountain West is here, they're here to stay? Max? Yeah, I mean, uh, other than is, is kind of interesting because they are a part of the Mountain West. I mean, uh, I hear what you're saying, but uh, this is obviously people have been calling it a banner year for the Mountain West. I know we were under uh, A lot of teams in our conference were under but I think – uh, we could flip that script this year for sure with uh, a, a good couple of runs from some teams. And um, uh, I think with a good run this year, too, maybe that will set us up for some better seating in the future. Second row. Oh, let's go to the third row then. Um, back to you, Max. Um, you've always worn your heart on your sleeve, had a chip on your shoulder. I think those are two poor, important components when it comes to winning in March. Um, how, how ready are you for this moment? Yeah, I'm very ready. Uh, I know we've get, we've had some tough draws in the past, and this is uh, definitely no simple draw either. But teams that are still playing now, they're all going to be good teams. So it's just a matter of focus on uh, focusing on your team and what you can do to to win that matchup. But um, just knowing that this could be our last game, just I think is going to motivate. It's all the motivation we need right now, uh, and with the opportunity to create history is is huge. And and we could go down in in history as one of the best Boise State teams of all time if we can. Uh, just put together a little run here. So uh, just kind of staying in the moment and realizing all that's at stake, uh, I think that's that's a huge motivating factor for me, at least. So, Second row. Max, you were talking a little earlier about your family's relationship with the Boyles. And, you know, I know, I you know, I know it's going to be this game is much more than the Rices versus the Boyles, but to have it in this stage, just how special does it make it at this, at this moment? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think in, when I look back at this, it'll be – even cooler to look back at after uh, but right now I'm just focused on like what's going on with my team and how we're going to win this game uh, but also playing in Dayton is, is super cool because no one else is really playing right now so I, I know uh, it'll be a very watched game and I think both teams are, are set for a great game and I think we match up really well with each other so uh, it should be it should be a great watch too so third row, uh, third row on the aisle um, got two uh, first for you Tyson how is this trip different for you? Um, you are now kind of the focus of, you know, opposing scouting reports and things like that. So how is this trip different for you to the NCAA tournament? Uh, it's, it's really not that different. Um, the main thing for me is just to focus on what we can do as a team to, to really get ourselves in the position to win, whether it's watching film, having a great practice out there. Um, it's all about the team, though. It's not about one individual. I think our team's a great example of uh, – you know, the sum of our parts is greater than the whole, or however that's phrased. I know Coach Rice says that a lot, um, but us together as a group is way stronger than any of us as individuals. So I think that's really what's important this week. Follow up question. I think you got that right, by the way. <laughs> um, Chibuzo, for you, you know, Max alluded to it. it it's, it's only one win, but it's the one win and really the one thing that has eluded this program. How, how much do you guys talk about getting the first NCAA tournament win in program history? Uh, I mean, that was one of the first things we talked about during our team meetings, you know, during the summer a couple months ago. Um, it's been on our list. It's something we want to do, and it's right here ahead of us, you know. So I feel like we're really motivated and really locked in just go get this done um, and make some Boise State history. And plus, you know, getting this first win, really get the monkey off our back and give us some momentum going forward. So that would be great. Other questions for our student athletes? Omar, your favorite uh, March Madness moment. Man, my favorite March Madness moment, we were talking about this before, it definitely was uh, Tarn Prince uh, coming, coming in here after, after, after the game, and he talked about – he explained what a rebound was. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that was pretty great. Um, no, but uh, besides that, I would say one of my favorite March Madness moments probably be FDU last year when they beat Purdue. I think, you know, uh, and then just the ripple effects of that, you know, their coach being able to get a job and that program being able to, you know, get some national attention. Uh, the, just the underdog story, you know, it's amazing. You know, it's amazing what God could do. So that was probably my, that's probably my favorite March Man this moment. Follow-up question to that, uh, is there any inspiration? And in, I know it's a different seed, but, you know, FDU being in this building a year ago and, and want to take that similar path. We we want to go all the way. Yeah, I think I think that's just uh, how simple it is. You know, uh, regardless of FDU, you know, us Boise State Broncos, we we want to go all the way. We want to do the best we can for this program. Shabuzo, I'll ask you what your favorite March Madness moment. 
Um, I'm going to make it personal because uh, for me it was my sophomore year at Texas Tech. We got to play at San Diego State. Um, I believe we played Montana State, but just my friends and my family were there. It was filled up. It was just a great environment. Um, it was my first time actually playing in March Madness. So personally for me, that was, that was a great moment. Tyson? Uh, it's it's got to be Selection Sunday two years ago when uh, after winning the conference tournament, just the satisfaction of knowing that one of our goals was accomplished there was uh, really cool. And just being able to play in that first March Madness experience, that's something I've always dreamed of. Max? Uh, one that sticks out to me that I remember is, uh, I think it was when my dad was at GU and we were playing Western Kentucky, I think, and uh, Demetri Goodson went length of the floor, floater for the win. Uh, for some reason, that one just popped into my head, but I remember that one. It was a buzzer beater. and. Uh, I think that was my favorite moment in March Madness history for me. Other questions for our student athletes? Omar, I, will, I do want to go back to you in that uh, you mentioned going all the way. Um, the Mountain West has, has become a, a power. And what San Diego State was able to do last year uh, in that role as being in the championship game, do you, were you do you watch that game thinking like no this is this is real and, and and being able to then step in the locker room step on the floor and 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 and, and fight and with that sort of Mountain West like banner and that flag? Yeah, I think it, it kind of goes to show that you know anybody can get there. You know, what I mean they're they're really really tough team and you know we are too. But it kind of goes to show that anybody anybody can do it as long as we you know you stay connected and. You know, you do it together and you, you, you lean on your teammates and you believe in the, what the coaches are saying. Um, but I think it kind of goes to show that, you know, anybody, anybody can get there. Let's go to the uh, second row. Omar, you know, all three guys to the side of you have, this is their third tournament. You know, this is, this is obviously your first. Just, you know, what's, what's, what's that moment going to be like when you step on the court and, and play in this tournament? Yeah, man. Uh, I'm just, you know, really, really thankful, you know what I mean, to be in this situation. You know, I thank God, you know, for all, for this team and for the journey, you know what I mean, and be able to play with these guys, you know, that they've, they've all – I've been able to lean on each and every one of those guys, you know what I mean. Um, and so it's definitely been a blessing, and I'm excited to go out there and compete with them. Well, we're really excited to watch you tomorrow night. Uh, congratulations on a fantastic season, and we look forward to it continuing uh, for Wednesday. Thank you so much for joining us. Best of luck. Thank you. Dayton fans in this collision. Is that like online or something? Right. Yeah. I think I think Dayton fans would actually like. I mean, like on my end, like I think a lot of Dayton fans felt for Boise. Like they'd be like they'd be rooting for him because like we also like understood how. Yeah, like it was. Yeah, right. I was I was just kind of surprised by that answer because I was like, I think that they would probably have like fans. I, I, that's why I was asking if something was said online. Yeah. No, I I think I think amongst the Dayton community, they'll be rooting for the, the Broncos. On the flip side, Colorado is like beating 
Dayton here twice in the last. Well, they beat them for the the 2019-2020 season, and they beat them in the NIT before that, the year before that. They beat them back to back years. Yeah, McKinley Wright. Oh, they should. They should, 100%. It was like, it's one of the loudest games in arena history. Mm. Yeah, that was crazy. At this time, we're really excited to have the head coach of the Boise State Broncos, Leon Rice, in his 14th season, uh, 22 and 10, 13 and 5, out of the uh, Mountain West, finishing in third place, and this is the third straight appearance. We tied for second. Tied for second. Okay, I'm sorry, Coach. Yeah. I go off the three. I saw three. USA today had a sixth place. Um, this. But yeah. this is your third straight appearance in the NCAA tournament, which is uh, something to be extremely proud of. Uh, Coach, before we open up the floor to questions, uh, just what your group's been able to accomplish this year and uh, the season that they've had. Yeah, they've been a terrific group. I mean, we scheduled really, really hard and went through a, a great November with a game at Clemson. We played uh, Virginia Tech, Butler, Virginia Commonwealth, came off the road after an 11-day trip, went and beat St. Mary's on a neutral, played North Texas, beat them. I mean, Played Washington State. Had we played a lot of good teams in that stretch, and I think that got us ready for a terrific Mountain West. And and uh, you know we went out and got some amazing road wins in the Mountain West, uh, winning at the Pit, which is really really hard to do at Nevada, and you know the final senior night uh, at San Diego State, you know where they were 15 and 0, got a win there. So we accomplished some really special things with this group, and. Uh, Excited to be here now. Questions for Coach Rice. Let's start in the second row. John Wistrow, Idaho Press. Leon, just, you know, all year we've been talking about, you know, first win in NCAA tournament history has been a goal for this program. Now that you're potentially on the eve of it, just what's what's the excitement? I know obviously you still have a lot of work to do, but, you know, just what's what's the thought process you get ready for this game tomorrow? Well, this team has never lost a game in the – in the NCAA tournament. So, uh, you know, you, you look at those stats and those can go way back and a lot of, you know, some of them I wasn't even at Boise State. I mean, it, uh, so that's not something we pay attention to. It's not a, you know, that's not something the team talks about or looks at. It's, it's we're getting ready to play a really, really good Colorado team. Uh, you know, Tad's a good, good friend of mine. I've watched this team uh, probably more than anyone I have in the country. So when our names flashed up together, I was like, well, at least I've seen these guys a lot. And uh, they're terrific. I mean, they got three guys that are on the NBA draft board. They got a terrific coach, terrific coaching staff. And they're a team that, you know, looks like they're playing their best basketball right now. I think they've won eight out of the last nine and, and have done it in looking really, really good. So... Uh, we know our work's cut out for us, and you know I think it's two really good teams playing Wednesday night. Ted, Ted was telling us a story about how Mark Turgeon just kind of connected you two, yeah. and just you know, 30 years later, just to, what's what's been what's been about that bond that's you know you guys have been able to keep it so strong. Well, Ted's just he's just such a great guy, and and you know we actually worked the last two years together with USA Basketball, and you know our families are tight and. Uh, we've just been going really close over the year because he's a guy that, um, you know, I've always respected his feel and his take on things. And so, you know, he, I bounce ideas off him all the time. And, he, you know, hopefully I help him with some stuff too. And, you know, we just, we've just grown our relationship. You know, our fam like I said, our families are tight. Our wives are really close. And, you know, uh, love his dog, Betty. <laughs> That's the best thing about him. Uh, but... You know, it's just we just go back a long ways, and there's a lot of history there and a lot of respect. And, um, you know, and, and then you see the, out of 67 other teams, we get Tad, you know. But, but 
that's just the way it is, and, and we know that. That's our business, and we just got to do our jobs. Uh, the question is, what, what type of dog type is of, Betty? Like a, a mini a golden doodle or mini golden doodle, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, second row on the other aisle. Uh, Jeff Gilbert, Daily News. Uh, Coach, again, when you, when you guys met, um, people hit it off sometimes, right? Yeah. What about each other, you, him, you kind of help – you feel like why you hit it off, why you kind of clicked as friends and, and stayed close? Yeah, well, Turge told me as soon as I got the job at Northern Colorado, because I was, Turge and I spent a little time together at Oregon, because I was leaving and Turge was coming in with Jerry Green. And Turge said, Oh, you got to go see my best friend, lives in Colorado. You got to, he's a high school coach, he's a financial planner, you know, he, he worked uh, uh, in that industry. And, so I drove down to Boulder. We went out and got together for an evening, and I just hit it off. I was like, this guy's great. And, and then I was recruiting one of his players, and I loved the kid. I was like, we need to take this kid, and my head coach didn't do it. I was, you know, and the kid went on to be a great player, and Tad still blames me for that. He's like, and I'm like, no, I wasn't the head coach. I didn't get the final say. I wanted him. So we, we joke about that. Matt Dilley was his name, uh, he, and Tad was at Longmont. And then... You know, I remember when Tad was going to get into college coaching and, you know, he's I was making $20,000 at Northern Colorado, you know, and I'm sure that was attractive to him. And uh, he was going to go to be like either restricted earnings or, you know, ops guy back then. It, it was different. And uh, I'm, I'm thinking this guy's crazy. He's leaving this financial industry that he's doing really well in to get into coaching. I'm like, really? You're going to do this? And he jumped in, and away his career went. So, it, you know, that's where I was like, okay, I respect this guy. He's he's going to do what he loves. And, and you know, you flash forward to now, it worked out pretty good for him. Yeah, Jeff, gonna, another question? Yeah, I was going to ask about, did you encourage him to get into college coaching? Obviously, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I... And now that we're here in Dayton together, I wish I wouldn't have. I wish I wouldn't have talked him out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you played last year. Yeah. Uh, what was that like the first time playing each other? And does it feel any different the second time? Yeah. I mean, you know, you just put blinders on really. And you don't like it's not Tad and me. It's it's Boise State versus Colorado. And you just put the blinders on that way and get, you know, we got jobs to do. We're doing our jobs. Both teams, you know. Both teams, we have process that we're all doing to get ready for the game, and it's not never about me and Tad. And you know, we'll regroup later. And but for now, it's Boise State versus Colorado. Fifth row in the back, Coach Rice, uh, Bob Beeler from Bronco Radio Network. Why don't you tell me a little bit about you watch Colorado all the time? What when you saw that name, what concerns you most about what you're going to see on the floor? I think the the two things that jump out at me is is you know just how good they've been playing because you know like I said Tad and I would talk after every game I'm all you know or, or, and and they were working through things just like every team does and you know when down the stretch they were playing so good and I remember saying to him like you know because about two or three weeks ago they were out considered out of the tournament now those forecasts don't seem to have known anything anyways but you know the world was telling them they were out and I'm like I remember saying to him like man you guys are playing so good it'd be a shame if you didn't get in because you know you could you could make a big run in this thing the way you guys are playing and then they flashed up and I'm like wow that that's the team we get to play so you know he's just got them playing so great now and you know they they made it to the championship of their tournament and you know it was a one possession game basically at the end of that so you know and, and I remember when I was talking to him about that I'm like man you guys are playing as good as anybody in that league you can win that tournament and and sure enough they were right there to do that so that, that's probably the thing that jumped out at me the most is how well they he's got them playing right now the follow-up would be you guys did play last year some of the guys are the same obviously some are different do you think that game will have any bearing on this game no I mean, is when you look back at that film, it's com completely different teams, really. And it was at the start of the year last year, and um, 
you know, so yeah, completely different deal. Third row. Jay Tess, KTVB. Um, going back into, uh, deep into my phone archive pictures, there's uh, photos, you know, of, of your sons coming here. And yeah. um, your oldest was half his age. And Cade, who's now on your roster, was just looked like a little boy. Yeah. What, what do you remember about them, you know, bringing them to Dayton and surrounding them with this environment? And what did that do for their dreams? Well, it's funny because I was just talking to Coach Beheim. I said, you know, you, you've been to so many NCAA tournaments. You won a national championship. You haven't came to Dayton as many times as I have, so I got you beat there. So, because this is my third to Dayton, and you know, this this is I, I remember back then when we got off the bus and you know off the plane onto the on the bus, and then got off at the hotel. Just the greeting, and you know, Dayton does such a good job hosting this thing that it. I told our guys, hey, it's it's great. It's real. It's a cool environment. Great place to play other than the fact we had to play the home team, that was made it a little rough. We were the last team to ever play a true road game in the NCAA tournament. So we're at, someday I might, if that's a Jeopardy question, I could get a Jeopardy question right. I think that would be the one. Um, but, you know, they, they came here and they saw it and they saw the excitement of the NCAA tournament. But, you know, back before that, they'd been, this is my 16th NCAA tournament. And so they'd been to a lot of them, you know, at my previous job too so uh but that you know at boise state that was two of the first ones and you know it was back to back dayton so uh they they saw and they also saw what a team can do coming out of dayton because you know we played LaSalle and they went on to the sweet 16 and you know it's like i said it's the advantage that nobody wants to have it's an advantage to have played a game Nobody wants to have that advantage that you've already played one, but you know you look at some of these conference terms, even in ours, New Mexico played one, made a run. You looked at you know, NC State, just made a five-game amazing run uh, by playing that first day. But you know, so uh, the team that comes out of here usually is is playing a little bit better than or and already has a game under their belt. Uh, follow up. Um. 12 is he's been a guy that super basketball savvy wears yeah. his heart on his sleeve chip on his shoulder whatever you want it feels like those are attributes that play well this time of year um what has he meant to this program yeah and uh how much do you want him to see him extend his career yeah one that's, day at a time that's it and it wakes you up in the middle of the night and you're like you know, you don't want this to end because it's been a great run. You look at the last three years, it was, you know, arguably the best three years in the history of Boise State basketball. And he's been a huge part of all these wins, a huge, you know. The, the, you can just go back to specific shots. You can go back to, you know, that game at the pit where we're breaking down the film like, huh, what did we do well? Well, Max made every shot he took, <laughs> you know, from half court. and. Uh, and scored 35 points and, you know, heck of a road win. The, the shot at San Diego State, the last year, San Diego State at home with the 12-0 run to end the game by himself. You know, not I mean, those points were by himself. The, the win wasn't by himself. I'm not saying that. But he's just contributed to so many great moments in Boise State basketball that will be forever remembered because, like I said, it's the three best years in the history of the program arguably, you know, and uh, in the Mountain West. I mean, you got to remember those other teams weren't in the Mountain West, which is a fantastic basketball league. So, uh, yeah, it's hopefully we can keep this thing going because, you know, we know that when the final buzzer goes off, we don't get to be together. He doesn't get to be a Bronco anymore, and, and you'd hate to even think about that. So we don't want to deal with that. And uh, – you know, Max is certainly that way. He he wants to uh, extend this thing as long as he can. Coach, you mentioned the three tra straight trips to the NCAA tournament, but uh, to add to that, what what's the Mountain West as a conference yep. has has been able to do, and obviously now six teams in the tournament. Uh, talk about your conference and then how it just continues to sort of impress year after year. Yeah, and, and it just keeps getting better. I mean, it's been a basketball league for a long time. I mean, you got national champions in this league. You got, I mean, last year, San Diego State's in the national championship game. And uh, so it's just, you know, 
we've always known that how good the teams were, but the 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 people out from outside don't understand how you know I've through my years of coaching I've played at all kinds of different arenas and venues and we've got the toughest arenas that you'll ever play at. I mean, where it's impossible to, you're hoping to get out alive, let alone win a basketball game. It's phenomenal. And then you got terrific coaches that when I first got in the league, you're like, every coach on the other sideline was like, well, that guy's in the hall. We're going to be in the hall of fame. That guy's in the hall of fame. And I mean, just is amazing coaches. And now, you know, we've always had a lot of, you know, guys that went on to play in the NBA and first number one pick in the drafts, a couple of those. And, you know, MB, MVP of the NBA and things like that. We've had great players. But now what you've seen is now these teams all got really old. And I think that's what made all, made it special this year. You look at all the guards in our league especially, the, these teams are led by veteran quarterbacks. You know, only us and UNLV had younger point guards. And, you know, New Mexico had three of them, so Donovan Dent's young, but the other two were old. And when you get veteran quarterbacks that are good players, and not good players, great players, you're going to have good teams, and that's where it starts. And, and I think that was what made our league a little bit different this year is, you know, is, is how many good guards there were that were old. And, you know, and that's where it started, and then great players all around them. So, that, you know, that's why we got six teams in. Let's go to the second row on the aisle. Hey, Coach Marcus Hartman, Dayton Daily News. And with there's been a lot of things floating around about potentially making some changes to the tournament, maybe expansion, maybe messing with the auto bids. Who knows what they might do? But I just kind of wonder what if you have any viewpoint on any of those kinds of things. Yeah, it's for another day. I, 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 you know, I'll let the experts figure all that out. I'm not smart enough to figure all that out. I'm just grateful. You know, there's a lot of really, really good teams that would trade places with us, and you know. A lot of really good. I watched a lot of that Big East action. Holy cow, you know, and some of their resumes were so impressive. And so, you know, because now, you know, like I told our team, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you play. It doesn't matter who you play. Because number one, I've never been to an NC. You know, like I said, I've been to 16 of them, and I've never, we've, I've never seen a bad team. <laughs> if you get to this tournament, you've done something special to get here. And, you know, so you just need to let uh, – seed doesn't matter, location doesn't matter, brackets don't matter. you got to find a way to play really good because you're going to play a really good team. And if you don't, you're out of the tournament. And that – simple as that. And, you know, so we're excited to play, excited to be here. You know, it, it, our guys are – just can't wait to get on the court and – let the fur fly. Third row. J. T Tusk, KTVB, got two for you about Tyson Dagenhart. First off, um, he has made his development almost seem effortless, which I know probably couldn't be further from the case. Right, right. But he says this, it, this is no different than his first NCAA tournament. How, how has he just been able to handle this so effortlessly, it's seemingly, and continue to grow and embrace people coming after him now with scouting report after scouting report. Yeah, because he's just an everyday guy. You know, he just he's there's such a consistency about, you know, a guy like Tyson. He just does his stuff. I mean, there, you know, it shouldn't surprise you. He's you know one of those straight A students. Just a, it shows up, does his work, and does it with a great attitude, and wants to develop, and wants to get better, and wants to be coached. All the things that. You know, you never want to take for granted, but you just, it's so consistent with Tyson that you almost do. And I'm never surprised by his growth because of the person he is. And so don't be surprised that it keeps going. I mean, you know, there's, I mean, he went from freshman of the year to all conference to first team all conference, and there's going to be some great things for him down the road, too. So we're going to see that. Uh, one more question, second row. You know, Leon, you, two years ago you guys went to Portland, uh, you know, kind of a team that had never played in this tournament. Um, now you guys have Max, Tyson, even Buzo has played in three. You know, what's that experience mean for you guys? Yeah, it, it absolutely helps you. It, you know, the, the, the more experience you get in these tournaments, the better. And the more times you knock on the door, pretty soon the door is going to open. And, you know, so that's the – because – 
like I said, it's, it's a hard tournament to get to. There's a lot of great teams and there's a lot, you know, this year there's so much parody, everybody, you know, the, the, it's apples and oranges and grapefruits. And so to compare all this stuff and to figure out who the 68 are is, is pretty tough because there's so many good teams and worthy teams that aren't playing in this tournament. And so we're, we understand that it's quite an accomplishment just to get here. And, but you know, the tournament is everything now. And so you got to get beyond just getting here, but getting here is an amazing accomplishment. Coach, we greatly appreciate your time. We're looking forward to watching. Well, I thought I had one. There's one more guy got. We're, we're on a hard line out. Oh, sorry. That, I, that one guy got here late. On so a time, 2.15. Uh, I got to get. Can you believe out. he's late? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, everybody. Appreciate it.